Okay, I think we're set up. Put something here for contrast, I mean to do the lighting. Wait a couple minutes for everybody to get here. Does that look too bright? Okay, that looks okay. All right. Let's wait for everybody to get here. Hope everybody's having a good Monday. I should tweet. Hi, Pacola. Hi, Julie. I'm just getting ready to tweet real quick. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Got some things to show and tell. Oh, let's see. There we go. All right. Hi, Irene, Nashua, uh, Rusha, Elizabeth. Anybody else I'm missing? Thanks, everybody, for popping in. I just put something here. I was working on another version of a rooster, so like a cartoon version. <laughs> so I just started playing with this one just to have something here until we get um, until we get crack a lacking. Hi, Estrada. Uh, anybody else I'm missing? Welcome. Good morning. Maybe I should make a good morning banner. Hi, Ray. <laughs> so I got my coffee, my juice. The cats are not up here yet. Um, <laughs> so. Hi, Arlene. Good, good morning. <laughs> so I was just doing a little bit of pointillism with the uh, uh, super tip markers because you know they're easy to use. Hi Suzanne, Leah, Leah, Leah Smeets. Where are you from, Leah Smeets? That's that rolls off your tongue. Hello, hello Leah, hello. <laughs> That's so cute. Where are you from, Leah? Um, let's see. I'm sure I probably missed some people. I can paste. Uh, let's see. Nuni. <laughs> or is that Nani? Nani or Nuni? Nani? <laughs> the Netherlands. Okay. Okay. Well, welcome. My step-grandfather, well, he since, of course, passed away, but he was from the Netherlands. Um, he came over here after World War II, and he always had an accent. I never had a problem understanding him, but a lot of the family members go, what did he say? <laughs> he, never, he never lost that accent his whole life. And I think he was in his, like, late, eight, late 70s, early 80s when he passed away, and he never lost that accent. So let's see. Davin D. Doodles. Good morning, Davin D. Noodles. Hi, Tina. So if you're just joining us for the first time, if you're here watching live, um, I stream every Monday and Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern. And uh, but I come on usually about 8:30 to say good morning to everybody. Sometimes we start a little early, but I like to say good morning to everybody. So yeah, that's why we, that's why we chat first thing. Hi, Missy, Candy. Leah is a Dutch name, is it? I thought it was a biblical name. Leah is a biblical name. Uh, let's see. Hi, G. Erica, anybody else I missed? G's been doing some vids lately. Rosala, Rosalia, that's pretty. Or is that Rosala, Rosalia? 
or Rosalina. It's pretty. Good morning, Julie. Hi, Melody. Good to see you, Miss Melody. It's been a while. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well, Miss Melody. And our Julie, Julie Topaz. She usually says, Happy Marvelous Monday. Today she said, Hello, friends. <laughs> Hello, friends. <laughs> and Pacola. And I said, Hi to Pacola. Let's see. Here come the cats. I hear, um, <laughs> I hear Malibu going. Brrr, brrr. That's what she, she's talking. She'll probably be up here in a minute. <laughs> I'm well. Thank you, Melody. I hope you are. So I hope everything looks fairly clear here. You know, we're on StreamYard, which, um, you know, we only get 720. We don't get 1080p. We only get 720. But I think they're going to upgrade that, you know, in the future. Let's see. Megan, Shelly, Allred. Hi, Shelly. No, baby, can't go back over here to the courts. You got to stay on this side. Um. <clears throat> Shelly, have you been doing any more composition book pages? Shelly, oh my gosh, love Shelly's composition. Where's my phone? Shelly's composition pages. Hi, Janet. Thank you. Looks good. Okay. Yeah, as long as we don't move too fast, right? <laughs> as long as we don't move too fast. Let's see. Let me go to, over here to IG. Okay, you're going to lay down there on the floor, baby girl. Okay, I see you, little princess. She's looking up at me like, I love you, Mama. I do. I love you. Okay, here's some of Shelly's pages. Let's see. Here's here's a double-page spread. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. But go over and follow Shelly K. Allred. And let's see. Let's see. Maybe I can find. Here we go. So she does awesome pages. Look at this. Isn't that cool? I thought so. I thought so. I love your pages, Shelly. So, yeah, y'all go over there and follow. Oh, there we go. Pacola's like this. She's like that snapping turtle, that, that Pacola. She put the link in already. Oh, here comes the other one. The girl's now on the floor, and here's the boy. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Okay, well, um, yeah, Leah is uh, in uh, the book of Genesis. So I'm not sure where uh, who, who started it first. <laughs> uh, thanks, Suzanne. Uh, let's see. Speaking of composition books, I'll start this off. Um, I went to our local bookstore. We have a little... Um, uh, I think it's women owned. I think five women own it. I can't remember. But anyway, local bookstore. And uh, they sell, you know, they have uh, all kinds of, it's a, not, it's a lovely bookstore. It's really lovely inside. And um, so they sell, of course, books, you know, fiction. Yeah, it all broke down just like to, any bookstore. And then they also have their little specialty sections like comp books and little, you know, books and papers. They have the paper rack. I didn't buy any this time. I think uh, last time, did I buy this? Maybe I bought this last time there. I was there. I'm not sure if I got this last time at their store or if I got this one at Books a Mill. I mean, at uh, Blick. <clears throat> but anyway, they have those kind of papers on the, on the stand. But anyway, they have these composition books. So I had to buy myself and Janet one. And some of y'all might have seen. I've had these this brand before um, some years ago. But I, I don't know where they are now. I think I've used them up and put them away. But they're called decomposition books. Decomposition books. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, they're recycled yeah, 100% post-consumer waste recycle pages. So they're called decomposition. So they have a great texture. They have a cool texture. So I got I got Janet and I each one. And look at the inside. Look, there's this little, um, here's a space to write things. 
and then it's got little little uh volcanoes little dinosaur and just little things like that and then oh in the back it's got a different little um here's sputnik and um the moon and then just got different measurements and it's just kind of cool it is it's um it's not uh college ruled but sometimes they come in graph paper sometimes they're dotted grid there's just different ones it just so happened i like these covers i like these covers we're not going to do coloring book giveaways anymore um yeah i did some last uh week before last i did one melody i'm still doing them i just can't i'm not what i'm not doing melody is doing international i can't send books out international because it's a minimum of $25, I might as well just send them an Amazon gift card and let them buy their own. It's the shipping is crazy. And plus some places aren't hardly, you know, you just never know if they're even going to get their mail. So I am still doing color book giveaways, but I'm only doing it in the United States. I'm doing separate giveaways for international where I'll send a piece of my art, a print, or something else. I just can't, I, well, I say I can't, I could afford it, but it's a waste. It's a waste of money to send a color book that costs $15 and spend $25 to ship it. So, yeah, I am still doing giveaways, but I'm not doing international book giveaways. It's just, it's a waste of money, you know, to do that. So, yeah. I, I just, I, I'll just buy a book for somebody if that's the case. So, yeah, but I am still doing giveaways. I did a giveaway, I think, last week. I think I did a, a giveaway last week. What is this little notice thing here? Oh, okay. Yeah, this tell me I need to restart for updates. I don't want to update right now. I don't want an update right now. <laughs> So anyway, I got these, uh, I got me and Janet one of these just because we love our composition books. And uh, yeah, so what else did I get over the weekend? I had to go to Lowe's to get um, air conditioner filters for the attic. Um, <clears throat> Hi, Ann. Anybody else I missed? So they had the little Valspar samples out. Um, if you want a good price on some paints, <laughs> look at your lows and go over to the Valspar section. These were three, $3.75, $3.95. Anyway, they're under $4. And they are eight ounces. So um, acrylic, you know, well, acrylic paint. Uh, but they're color samples. And I love these two colors. I love that gray. And I love this. This one is called uh mystic sea now i will say this they're satin so they're not going to be good for color pencil but they would be good for a background or you know if you just want to you know paint in your art journal you know like you would with any other paint satin gloss metallic they'd be good for anything except color pencil i wouldn't recommend satin or gloss like that for color pencil but i had to get these two colors because look Aren't they pretty? So I got that. And then I did get some more paint chips. Uh, just a few. Because, you know, I'm doing that. Um, I'm doing the uh, Pantone paint chip challenge. And so these are the ones that I've done uh, last week. Here, let me move this. Out of Let's put that right here. Maybe they'll show up on here. So, uh, and I did post these on Instagram. So this is... Uh, the striking purple. So that's ones I did uh, on the purples. Here's ones I did on the yellow. So and you could put it that way. It doesn't really, they don't really go together. Um, I just did them kind of sort of to go together, but not really. I didn't really match them up or anything. So um, yeah. So the Pantone challenge, if you look at hashtag Pantone challenge, there's all different ways people are doing the Pantone challenge. Some are painting on them. Some you go, you match items up with it. Like you could take and find everything you had purple that matched that purple. Um, you could do um, like, I should probably pull the right color purple. Um, you know, matching things up or they'll take the, 
the cards, the Pantones outside and they'll hold them up against something that, that exact color. Um, yeah, I know. It's crazy, isn't it, Suzanne? Yeah, I know. Shipping. It's shipping, people. I know. And uh, they'll take their the Pantone cards and hold them up against a building or a restaurant or a forest, if they're green, uh, and, and match. So just go look up hashtag Pantone Challenge, and you'll see all different ways people are doing it. And uh, so I thought that was kind of fun to do on occasion. I'm not doing like 100 days or anything like that. All right, so then let me move this out of the way. I was just, what I was doing here was just doing, um, here's another one of my roosters, doing um, doing the, um, I, was, I was doing some pointillism, just dot by dot. Dot, you did not have to do that, Miss Dot. You won. <laughs> dot, you did not have to pay postage for your giveaway. Thank you so much, Dot. Thank you so much. You, let me click on you. You did not have to do that, but thank you so much, Dot. That was that's very um, very kind of you. Thank you so much. I'll send you out the next prints that I do too. Prints are easy. You know, I can just mail a print. It's when you have anything, books or anything like that. Well, thank you, Dot. Dot's in the UK. Thank you, Dot, so much. Very very kind. Um, so, and I wrote, I wrote that down. I'll send you, and I know I already sent you something, but you know, I'll send you a print out because, um, it's easy. It's easy to send out prints. I don't mind doing that. So this is just with, uh, some super tip markers, not the purple one here, super tip markers. And it's just dots like this called pointillism. And, um, so it's just like dot by dot like this and you fill in. You fill in with dots. It takes a while, but if you're just sitting there, sitting there, we'll say watching TV or watching, you don't have anything else to do. Like, you know, we never have anything to do, but uh, you can fill in with dots. And so I just use three shades of uh, super, super tips are awesome. Hi, Terry Snow. Super tips are awesome because, let me get another piece of paper. I got some more things to show over here. I've got lots of things to do today. Let's move this. I'll show that in a minute. Let's go on the back. Let's go on the back of this paper here. I got something on the other side. So, um, hi there, baby. So super tips are like kind of like a bullet tip kind of thing, but you can get wide, you can get thinner, and you can get real thin. So it's they're so versatile and they're and they're water based. They don't really blend well when you try to do it on paper. When you try to blend two colors on paper, but what you can do and I do I have a little piece of plastic handy? You what you can do is take a piece of plastic. I don't see. I had some sitting here earlier, but I cleaned up. Uh, let's see. Let me just find something plasticky. Hang on. I'll, there's plenty of stuff around here. I just want something that's going to show up well on camera. All right, let me just use this ruler. Janet's going to have a fit, but you just take anything plastic, a piece of packaging, you know, which I'm, I'm looking. I don't even have any packaging. I took my garbage out. But what you do, what you can do with um, the super tip or any water based is you can just put it down on plastic like this, and then you can pick it up with your Pick it up with a water brush or just a, a brush, and then it, you, it can act as like a watercolor. So you can use your super tips as watercolor by putting them on plastic. So it'll clean off, Janet. It'll clean off. <laughs> Janet loves her rulers. <laughs> Hi, Judy. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Suzanne. That's very kind. So you can do this with your super tips or any water-based uh, markers. Just use your water brush. So let's move this. I just wanted to show you I was just working on some pointillism. On uh, This is my cartoon version. What I've been trying to do is flip this back over. 
what I've been trying to do is like a realistic kind of look. Well, I say realistic, you know, semi-realistic and then doing a cartoon version of it. Um, doing a cartoon version of it on the other side. So hi, Nancy. Uh, Paula Hayes. I know I'm probably missing people. Thanks for coming in. So I've been using the big picture. I use, I've been using the sketch encyclopedia, 900 drawing projects. Now these are very little. If you can't hardly see them in this, you can take a picture of it and expand the picture. But what I've been doing is taking the one picture here and drawing, <laughs> baby boy, and drawing it large and then just looking up online for other pictures. And this one I just made up. But um, and just drawing some other little creatures around the main one. And then the, this one, then I do a, like a cartoon version. So I have a couple different ones here. <laughs> see how long he likes that being on his head. Let's see. So there's some rabbits. And again, doing kind of a little my own version, a cartoon version of it and you know just adding kind of fun little things like maybe some little antennas at the ends of his ears here little <laughs> you know just do something fun with them and uh <laughs> yeah yeah he's playing with the little mouse okay let's see what else did i have in here so this is my really big sketchbook here's some little piglets and uh, I'm still working on this one. This is going to have this little spiked little hairs all over his head, probably on his ears too. Have little spikes. <laughs> so just having fun with it. And then again, here's the rooster um, in a kind of a cartoon version. I was just playing with the pointillism on that one. Gave him some antennae. <laughs> and then we did this one on the stream a couple, uh, like week la week before last. Anyway, I played with that, and it's got some paint on this one. And then again, just playing with another version. And uh, I think that's all in here so far. That's all I got. No, don't lick the rooster. Okay, so. <laughs> then um, I got a couple things sent to me as well. But, oh, and I'll show you this. Okay, so. Oh, baby. I'm going to have to back out here just a little bit. I think. Let me back the camera out one. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's, let me adjust this. Hang on, guys. Now that I backed it out. So, this is an 11, uh, 14 by 17, no, 11 by 17 um, Bristol pad of paper. And Colleen and Kathy were making little houses last Friday. They were making little houses, and I forgot to find, look for that Bow Bunny book. I was, let me see if I can just put my hand on it on the shelf. I may or may not be able to find it right off. Let's see, is that it? Hang on, guys. Let's see if I can, let me see if I can find that Bow Bunny book. Is that it? Yeah, here it is. Okay, so I made this some years ago, and uh, I thought it was a house, but it's actually a door. So Bo Bunny uh, made this uh, scrapbook kit thing with the little doors, and um, then it had the paper and different chipboard. So I'll flip through this in a minute. But anyway, um, Colleen and Kathy were making house uh books, house journals in the shape of a house. And Colleen did one in the shape of a barn. And I said, well, and we were all talking about different ideas. And I said, well, what about a pagoda, a church? And so I said, well, I'm going to go try because I had the vision in my head. I had it envisioned. So I said, well, let me just go ahead and start making it while they were working. So it took about, this took about four hours. And, um, Yes, I know, right, Judy? I'm not giving him enough attention. He goes, I'm out of here. Trust me. They get a lot of attention. <laughs> they are not in lacking for attention. So I cut what I did with this is this is the chipboard, the um the cover um 
the pad that I put a piece of chipboard as a base. And then, and I don't know if you can see, but look, these are all uh, individual pieces of chip of chipboard just cut. This, this, and then they're stacked. Let's see if you can see on the side. See, they're stacked and painted. So I thought about making another smaller version of this. And I said, no, it'll take too long because this took four hours. And even a smaller version would take probably almost that long. But I thought I would just show you some of the steps in it and maybe make just like one of the little chipboard pieces just to show you how I did one little piece. And then you can do you can do it yourself if you want. And it doesn't have to be a church and stained glass. Now, that being said, what I used on here is this is an old uh, Dover book coloring book. And this is from, <laughs> I'm afraid it was only two dollars and fifty cents back in. Let's see if there's a date in here. The pages are starting to yellow. This book is old. 1972. <laughs> Jan, shouldn't we say that? Jan and I had, had books, <laughs> clip art books and stuff. This is from 1972. The pages are all yellowing. Um, I did make a couple copies some time ago. I don't even remember because I wanted to use them for another project. And so, of course, there you can white, you know, you can clear that up. You can clear the yellowing up by making a copy of it. But anyway, so I have some that I made copies of, but um, this is old. <laughs> and um, so I took one of the, I actually took one of the, now you can still get these. You can still get, I don't know if you can get this exact book, but you can still get these uh, stained glass coloring books at Dover. You can still get these. I don't know if you can get this exact one, but I have two or three different ones. I just picked this one out of my stack and tore a page out. That's where I got this. Okay. So I raised it up a little so it's not touching it's not touching the back paper. It is, I put some chipboard in the corners to make it like puff up just a little, just to get a little, <laughs> you were nine years old in 1972. <laughs> so anyway, you can get some light behind it and it is brighter in person. And then what I did a couple things. So if you see these dots right here and I'll make a strip, I'll make one of these strips here just so you can see how I painted it and stenciled on it. And then I used this um, Ranger liquid pearls. Now you can get perfect pearls. There's different brands. This just happens to be a Ranger one, but it's very uh, silvery, um, silvery pearl. And so that's what I used for the little dots. Now it's going to want to flash out every time I move in a certain way. So the little dots there are the perfect pearls or the, this is the liquid pearls by Ranger. But there's all different brands. Once you put it on, you've got to sit and let it, let it sit for some hours. You want to do this kind of stuff at the very end. Okay, you want, hi Tracy. Jenny goes, y'all need to stop with the I was only... <laughs> Yeah, everybody's going. I was only so and so in 1972. I was born in 1972. <laughs> Janet. So anyway, um, <laughs> you can, uh, you, but you got to let this uh, sit because it is dimensional, right? It's dimensional, so it's going to leave a little bump there, and it's got to dry. The lines and some of the silver outlining I just did with the silver gel pen. And then what I did on the um, st faux stained glass here, that you see that shine on there? What I did is I took some scribbles, and again, you can use whatever brand. This just happens to be a little shiny, which made it look like a uh, leaded glass. So I went around all the black edges. I went around it with the scribbles to make it look like leaded glass. So those are the two products that I used and other than that, it was just paint. The bluey silver is the Deco Art Metallic Pewter. That's the pewter color. So I will make a strip just showing you how I did that. And um, it's really easy. And I just use this. I've been using this little stencil just because it's sitting on my desk. I've been using this little stencil for everything. So um, anyway, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put stuff inside. I started doing a couple little projects in here. 
This is that moon paper. So I'm going to, that's all I got done. It's just painting black and putting a couple of glue, I glued a couple of things in, but it's, it's kind of hefty. I painted the back black as well. And uh, so I just thought it would kind of look cool. I mean, I had fun making it again. You could do like Colleen did and make a barn or a house or a pagoda. I had a whole list of stuff. I was taking notes while I was watching. Um, you know, um, I don't know if I have it handy right here. Let's see. I put it in my idea book over here. Let's see if I have it handy. But I had a whole list of things. Uh, a pagoda, a birdhouse, a birdhouse, and you could do the whole journal. It doesn't have to be this big. You know, any size journal. It could be, you know, it could be just one of these, you know, a book like this. It, you can cover anything. And you could do it this way, you know. You can do it this way. And you can make it a birdhouse. You can make it a pagoda. You can make it um, oh, doors and windows. And speaking of, um, when I was at Colleen's, I said, yeah, I have an old Bo Bunny uh, book that this was at, at one time in a kit. And I'm talking probably, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. I don't even know how long. Yeah, it does look like a phone booth. You could paint this red or you could paint it blue. <laughs> Um, so anyway, and then I have the little papers in here, just, and, and this is not all bow bunny papers. There's just random papers in here. So I have papers and then, then, then the chipboard that came in the kit. See, they had different little windows and doors. And then the, again, I put more paper. Let's get to the next chipboard piece here. I don't remember how many chipboard pieces were in it. This one, so you can. I'm just gonna flip over to the six or eight different pieces of chipboard were in it in the kit. So, to make the little journal, here's another window. So, and of course, you, you can decorate these up even more, or you could use Katherine Anderson's doors and windows and glue her door and windows on the chipboard. <clears throat> and and make uh hi colleen you could glue your chipboard um your katherine anderson doors and windows on chipboard and make one of these little books so there we go so this was an old bow bunny kit i don't know that you can get it anymore probably not unless you got it off of, you know somebody just reselling it but it came with the chipboard it came with the rings and not the papers. The papers were my own different papers. But there you go, Colleen. Remember I said I was going to pull it for you to show you? So that's the little Bo Bunny book from, I don't know, it has to be at least 10 years ago. Probably more like 12 to 15 years ago. I don't know how long ago this was, uh, I made this. <clears throat> so there's that. You pick up all my journals here and put them back up on the shelf. They're double layered. They're layered up double here. So I'm going to find places for them all again. So I don't trip over them when I walk out the door. Okay. So let's get a sip of coffee. Whoops. I got coffee. And just, I, got, I got cat toys all around my feet. They bring me toys like, Mama, play with me throw it out in the hall there so anyway that's what i did i will show you again i'll just do a little piece of chipboard just to kind of show you. it's real simple just to do something like this and then you can and it doesn't have to be this pattern it could be any pattern if you do a pagoda you could do you know a japanese pattern but anyway so there's that and that's what i used on that and again, this I, they, they still sell these. This one, I don't know if they still sell, but the, the pages have yellowed from 1972. Okay, so let's put that aside for a minute until we get back to that. <clears throat> a couple more things of show and tell. Okay, so I have to <laughs> this was funny. Janet, Janet uh, and I were talking about, I had bought some of um, these markers, I mean, these highlighters. They're not bundled together, but I had bought these um, pin and gear at Walmart. 
I showed these last week. And Janet goes, well, no, those aren't the same ones I have. I have these other ones. Let me put a rubber band around these. <laughs> Janet said, those aren't the ones I have. And then she mentioned something on stream last week about mid, mid, uh, mild liners. And um, Katie in Alabama, she's not ever here live, but she was watching the show. She goes, well, Janet can't have the mild liners if you don't. <laughs> Katie, Katie sent me the mild liners. Are these the ones you have, Janet? <laughs> Are these the ones you have? Let me go ahead and zoom in one here. <laughs> so katie sent me these and i swatched them out just so you guys could see them um <laughs> let's see the camera got a little bright there <laughs> i scrap girl 12 so i think that's let me let me turn down the brightness just the tad there we go <laughs> Anyway, so I thought that was so funny. So thank you, Katie, for sending and she and what she said that was so awesome about them, and then what Janet said was awesome about them is that it has the nice chisel tip. Let me get a dark one. So you can do calligraphy. You can do calligraphy with them. So let's just do. And that didn't go. This is our other test. They don't go through. That's just a test that we did with the super tips. So let's see here. I could have done that better, but so thanks, Katie. <laughs> so thanks, Katie, for the mild liner. Double sided soft mild line. So they're says they're water resistant. They're made by zebra. So I don't know if those exact same ones as Janet had, but they are uh pastel, pastel colors. Okay, so I wanted to show that. Thanks, thank Katie. Thank you. So she's Katie's the one that sent us all those journals last week. And um <clears throat> so let's put that aside. Then um, let me put my little things together here. I'm going to make sure I get my thank yous in order. And the same thing, I'll send Miss Marie a thank you. So Miss Marie S, as some of y'all know, um, Miss Marie S, I don't know how much her, she wants to say. I don't know if her real last name is out there or not, but she sent, so I'm going to be giving a, do a giveaway and I'll probably do this today. <coughs> and I can do this international because I can put it in an envelope. So I got two things. She sent some mini comp books. Now, these are extra skinny. Hi, Eileen. Good morning, Eileen, the enabler elf. These are extra skinny. I have I have these. That I've, now, they're going to look puffier because I've worked in them. But they were thicker. These, the little composition books um, <clears throat> that, you know, I've done little collages in this. And... Uh, they're a little thicker, but look how nice and thin. These have 50 pages. Look at this. Hi, Lady Jen. <clears throat> so I'll do a giveaway of uh, some of these. I'll give I'll give one of each color away or something like that. So I'm gonna give away a couple of these. Aren't they cute, Davine? Or is it Davon Davin? Davin D? Davin D, I think. Look how skinny. And so anyway, composition books are pretty uh, sturdy. Um, the, although the, the this, this particular one, I, I can't speak for these. I haven't worked in this particular one. This is American Scholar. This one is, I'm not sure who made these. But anyway, it right now is the time to look for these. If you're out looking for school supplies, even though nobody knows about the school openings or anything like that, the school supplies are still out. The school, <laughs> they have still put the school supplies out because even if you're going to have to teach your kids from home, you're going to need some supplies. Hi, Tecla. 
Yes, they're so skinny, right, Colleen? They're so skinny. So anyway, um, um, th this particular brand, they kind of a couple of the pages started falling out. So what I did is I just tape them back in. I don't care if things if they start falling out of a book, I'll just tape them back in. But um, and this one may not be the one. I have two or three, uh, three or four different ones like this that I've worked in. And uh, <clears throat> so, but they're fun. They're fun to do. It's just like, you know, just like I do my little art cards or you could do an ATC and you just have a whole little book. And what's, what's nice about something this size is you can just keep something like this on your desk. So when you have extra uh, paints, if you have extra paints left over, you can just scrape them in this little book, right? You can scrape them in a little book and then just go back and doodle or like these are some stickers, you know, leftover stuff. So it's kind of, I call them desk journals. You can call them leftover books, whatever. So you use up your stuff in something that just kind of sits on your desk all the time. So it doesn't just, you know, just you're not wasting anything. So Marie sent these and which I'm going to do some giveaways today if y'all behave. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Y'all always behave. Uh, she also sent me two of um, Shannon Green's Paintable Custom Keepers. Now, these are tiny ones. I'll show you. I'll open one to show you. So I'm going to give away one of these as well. So um, thank you, Marie S., for um, sending us these things. And she, uh, she sent a nice little note. And so thank you so much. And... Um, so if y'all don't know, Shannon Green is making videos again. So just look up Shannon Green on YouTube. You'll find her. And she sells these. Um, they're, I'm not sure where she gets this particular stuff. She has her secret source of where she gets this stuff. And she also, used, um, she also used to use, and I don't know her whole process now, if what she's doing now, because it's been a while, because they moved and all kinds of stuff going on. But um, they would use old billboard, old billboard um, signage to make them. Now, these are her paintable custom keepers. And I'll read what it says here. But look, it's like a little mini travelers. Look, this is the size of it. This is the size of it right here. So, and it has the loop. So you put your own uh, signatures in it. But look, and it's paintable, she says. All right, so let me read what it says. Your custom keeper comes pre-strung but not fastened off so you can remove the elastic cord to make decorating your cover easier. When you're ready to start using it, just follow the diagram for restringing or tying the knot off. This comes, this comes in the package, right? This comes in the package. And look how easy that is to mail. So easy to mail right here, people. <laughs> so, and it's, Shannon does sell this and it's by Shannon Green. And then here she says, the solid white paintables are made, this is A7 size, that's what she says here. Solid white paintables are made from sturdy 18 ounce fused vinyl that is water resistant, heat resistant, and tear resistant. All of our fused vinyl products can be painted and customized, but the white is a little easier since it usually doesn't require any prep work. You can collage, sew, or paint it with acrylics, alcohol inks, paint pens, and more. And I thought about using, I do have some old alcohol inks uh, that I could just drop on here and see what happens. I don't know if they'll soak in or if they'll resist. I don't know. Um, so the five by eight will, uh, will accommodate bound sheets of three by four, loose sheets of four by six. She has different sizes. So uh, just look up Shannon Green. And um, yeah, so she sells these and they feel really good in your hand. So this one, again, you could take the strings out. She doesn't have them tied, so you can take them out easily and then just restring it. I wouldn't care if paint got on them because that's just the way I am. But um, yeah, so there, and then you just put your little signatures in here. So you would cut your paper this size, fold it in half, and then you'd have a signature, right? Just like, like this. So you'd have your sheet of paper and, and you'd cut it like this, well, to the size. And you stack these up, fold them in half, and then you, they just fit up under. 
you just open it up and fit it up under your strings if y'all have never used a traveler's uh, book before. So anyway, isn't that cute? Thanks. So yeah. And then it just folds over and then you have your, and then, you know, I could hard bend this, you know, bend it uh, more uh, crisper, but it's just kind of cool to have it kind of softly bendable. So anyway, I am going to give away, uh, Marie sent two, so I'm going to give away this other one today. If y'all would like, would y'all like a giveaway today? <laughs> I know, right? So Shannon Green, by Shannon Green, that's her logo, um, her avatar and her logo right there. So um, just look for her on YouTube, and she has a website. I don't know if Pacola, maybe she already did it. Put a, uh, Shannon Green's website in the in the uh, link. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to give away that, and I'll give away I'll give away, do two separate giveaways, and then I'll give away three um, little uh, or maybe, you know what I should do? I should do two separate giveaways and do like this so that somebody can get two each. So we can do three giveaways. We'll see how this works today, but that that's the plan. I'll do a giveaway. Let me put that over here. I don't know that I'll work on this today. We'll see how much time we have. Oh, another cat toy sitting here. <laughs> uh, would the mini comps fit that custom? Oh, I don't know. Will they fit the custom keeper? Let's another. Well, they'd fit in there, but they'd be a little small. Oh, yeah, I guess they would. Look, that would be perfect. Well, then you know what I'll do is I'll do... When I get, do a giveaway with the custom keeper, I'll throw in one of these comp, comp books too, just so you have something. Good idea, Lady Jan. Perfect. Maybe that's why Marie sent them. Do you think? Maybe that's why Marie sent them. <laughs> and I didn't get that. Oh my gosh. So thanks, Marie. And thank you, Lady Jan. That's great. Okay, so we'll put one in there. <laughs> All right, so let's move this aside. The other thing I did get, um, I ordered this. Uh, this took about an extra, took an extra week to come from Amazon. But I had told y'all that I had bought this realistic portrait grayscale coloring book by Christine Karen. Now I have some other books by Christine Karen too. If y'all remember the guy that I painted with the holding the crystal ball. Oh, I think it's something like that in my book i'm not sure it might be in here it might be in my in my uh color book binder let's see it would be toward the more toward the back i think let's see ah here it is okay this one right here that's a christine uh karen well let me take it out because it's got a glare from the over the light so this is from christine karen's fairy book so um I, I did this guy in, I think I used pan pastel and, and color pencil. So uh, this is from a Christine Karen book, fairies right here. I always try to put the, leave the name or write the name of the uh, artist. And so I wanted to look like this was glowing in his face. So, um, but that's a Christine Karen. And so anyway, I liked when I saw the realistic portraits, I said, this might be a good one to practice for everybody to practice their, um, get this back up on the shelf. Portraits with, and, and I'm probably not going to pull out the pan pastels today, but pan pastels would be an excellent one to practice. I think she did her originals in watercolor because um, she has the pictures of them here. Here's the, all the pictures of the pages in the book. But I thought maybe we would do a, um, uh, there we go, realistic part. Thanks, Pacola. And uh, the baby, Lady <laughs> Jan. Uh, so anyway, uh, it looks like she did her originals in watercolor, I think. Is that what she said? I thought she said something somewhere. But anyway, so she printed them out in grayscale like this. So that you, and it's, it is on like create space paper. Okay. It's on thin paper, but, um, I did one with, uh, Copics. 
So these are good to use with Copics, but remember, it's going to go right through. So let me show you the back. Here's the back of the one I did. So I did this one with Copics and the little white little hairs and the little white accent there. That's with Posca. Uh, so I did this one with Copics and I thought maybe we I didn't do the background. I could, you know, do something with the background, too. But I thought maybe we would do one of these with Copics just to show you. Um, you know, it's how it's not that hard, but I'm going to do a little flip real quick just so you can, I, and again, I tore this one out already or cut it out. Um, they're not perforated. So, but, uh, anyway, so I thought that this was really a cool book to practice your shading, whether you're doing, um, whether you're doing a marker or pan pastel. Those are the two things. I, I mean, pencil too. I, I have no pencil on this. I did not add any. Well, no, I take that back. I did do a little bit of a blue pencil right in the corners of her eyes. But the rest is all just uh, markers and a little bit of Posca. A little bit of white Posca and the little strands in her hair. That's white Posca. Okay, but they're just Copics. They're all Copics. So I thought this was kind of a cool. Oh, thank you, Nani. Hi, everybody else. Oh, good. I'm. Uh, let's see. Euthenia, Euthenia, Napoli, Napoleon. I know I did, I did not get that right. <laughs> so anyway, I thought this. Maybe we'll do this one. We'll be. We could do eyes really nice in that one. Maybe we'll do her. I just thought it would be kind of fun. Again, I think pan pastels would be awesome. <clears throat> It'd be awesome to do pan pastels. But I don't know that I'm going to get those out today. Whoops. Let's see, did I cut that deep enough without cutting 10 layers out? Yeah, there we go. Um, and do a um, do a Copic, but pan pastels would probably be amazing. We'll see. We'll see if we drag out the pan pastels. But anyway, so I I really like these uh, Christine Karen grayscale um, pages. So I thought maybe we would play with one of these. Again, I got this on Amazon, and, and Pacola's already put in the link. So here's some of her other books. She has, um, the, here's the fairy one. That's the one that I did. It's fairies, and then they have a fairies one and fairies two, I think. She has mermaids. Um, oh, here's fairies two. So she, I have, I think I have two. I have one of these that are in green, and I have one of this one in blue. So, and you can also get printable downloads in PDF format that you can go to her Etsy shop, Christine Karen's Etsy. So you can uh, purchase them in a PDF form if you just want to download them and print them on whatever kind of paper you want. Uh, she's out of Alberta, Canada. Um, so anyway, yeah, here's uh, another picture of them in black and white. And here's another picture of them in color so Tracy said let me I, I always forget I can do this <laughs> I always forget uh, I always forget that you can uh, oh thank you Judy thank you Judy very kind <laughs> so yeah pan pastels would be awesome to do these in but I just did this one and I just put it a piece that had an envelope. I just put that underneath of it because they do bleed through. Alcohol markers will bleed through. So uh, I did it very, you know, it was very subtle. And um, so here's this one. Let's see what color, let, how did she color this one? You don't have to color it like she did, obviously. Okay, there's, there's how she colored this one here. Okay, so we might do that. Let's see, do, am I caught up on everything? All right, before I do this, though, let me go back to just showing you how on this book, how I just did one of these little strips. So again, this is like three layers of chipboard. 
it's like the cardboard but smooth okay and i've got it layered up and all i did was glue some layers together and pop dot or just more like i put pop dots under the corners of here so that i could get a nice thin strip under there but you could just you know glue some layers glue two or three layers and then just stack and, and stack as if you, as, high, as uh high as you want this to be um raised off your book now this did make it even more heavier because i've got like three layers of chipboard of you know chipboard on here so it did make it a little more thick but i just thought i would do one for you real quick just a strip just just to show you how easy it is so i'm just going to put some black and a little bit of the deco art uh, metallic pewter color Oops, oh, forgot to shake it so you get the oils there. If you don't shake it, I've got to really shake up the metallics really well. Hi, Jerry. Uh, all right, so here we go. And uh, let's see. So let's just get a brush. Let's just get a small brush. So all I did, and this is just so simple, guys, but I'm, I'm going to show you how I did it. Uh, let me get a piece of wax paper. So I've already got pretty much of a mess here. So I just painted, just painted the chipboard. I didn't paint the backside because no need. And, uh. See, and then when you got leftover paint like that, that's when you, you want to scrape it in one of your little books. So did anybody do anything fun over the weekend? Do the side. Well, I don't even really need to do the sides much because that's going to have the pewter on it. I went to... I went to Lowe's and I told I said this at the beginning. Some of y'all probably weren't here yet. And thanks everybody for being here. We have almost 200 people. Thanks guys. Um, at Lowe's, you can buy these little Valspar um, samples and they're in, they are a satin. So they're going to have a little bit of a sheen to them. So color pencil is not going to be loving it, but as a, you know, if you want to do a base or something like that, this one was um, mystic C I love it. And they're only like the three 75 or 95 and they have their own little Valspar display. And there's probably, I'm going to guess 12 or 15 colors on the display. Now you only can get the ones that they display. You can't go say, can you mix me up a little thing? No, you only can buy what they got on their display. And I think there's either 12 or 15 colors. And I got that one, and I got the gray. I got the um, Ocean Storm. They had a lighter gray, and they had this gray. And again, they don't have tons of colors, but they I think they rotate them out seasonally. So just be looking for them. Okay, so now I've got the, um, the base coat there. Now let me get that with the heat gun real quick. here so all i did on the edges is i just took my finger and kind of ran it along the edge and i because i wanted it not perfect i wanted it see kind of there we go you can see it there so i wanted it kind of a little thin and thick i, I wanted it to look a little just not just not perfect i wanted it to kind of look like that right there so that's what i did around all the edges of each piece okay just kind of you know, just go around it like that okay now let me hit that with the heat gun <clears throat> it's a real pretty picture you started a picture in ruby colors volume two um yeah and i think she has a volume does she have a volume three out now Tracy, I think uh, she has a volume three. And because I put it on with my finger, it's a little thick there on the edges. I won't probably get it 100% dry. 
Like, so I just wanted to show you how I did this. All right, now I don't want to mess up that too much with this, but we'll see how I do because it's not dry yet. So then I just get a makeup sponge, makeup wedge, and then I just have whatever kind of stencil pattern you like. I like this one. And I just went across like this. And again, I'm getting it all over the back. So take your time, guys. Make sure everything's dry. I'm just doing this as a little sample. See? The, the paint's not dry on the edges there, so I'm making it a little bit of a mess. Take your time when you do it. This is just a little sample piece here because I want to show you um, when you go to do the uh, perfect pearls, or not the perfect pearls, the, what do you call it? Um, liquid pearls, liquid pearls. All right, so let's just do that. All right, so take your time. Again, do it neater, but I just want you to get the idea. And then let's just hit it with the heat gun real quick. And then all I did was now do this, this part at the end. Um, I'm not sure. I thought she did Tracy. Maybe I'm wrong. And then let's start over here on the neater side. And then I just squeezed out just a little drop of the pearl in each one of the designs and it gave it like a little um little brad looking a little uh, rivet looking and again do this neater your stenciling i just uh wanted y'all to see so what it does is it makes a raised little pearl silver pearl button so it's right can y'all see how that's raised like that and that's all i did and then just glued them all down in strips i i bordered it and then these are just little shapes i cut out to kind of give it a cathedral type look to it and then on the let me get some of the paint off my hands here let's move this out of the way this will take a while to dry so you know these all these strips will take a minute to dry um, I made this one took me about it took about something like four hours to make this cover. All right, let's see where can I stick this right up there, just out of the way. And then on the on the stained glass again, this is an old. This is from 1972, but so it's all kind of yellowed. <laughs> but um, you can buy these books, these Dover coloring books, stained glass. They, they have two or three, I don't even, maybe more now, different versions of this. So if you get one, it's going to be white. <laughs> it, won't be, it won't be yellowed. But, um, and then all I did, that's just one of, the, that's what this sheet is right here. I just cut it down and then I pop dotted in a little bit of um, triangles on the corners to give it stability did the same thing with all the little dots, okay? And then I colored this in. This is just colored in with um, super tips and then uh, and just kind of uh, wiped it out because it's, it's like a vellum, okay? It's like a vellum. So when you put your water down, you can go in there with a baby wipe and kind of wipe it back, kind of wipe it back a little bit so that you can, um, and you can do this, you can do it with Copics, I might have even done a little bit. I might have done some of this part with Copics as well. So just whatever kind of um, uh, marker you want to do. And then if you'll see the black shiny part, that I just went around all the black, just like if it was a stained glass look with some scribbles, 3D paint. It doesn't have to be this brand. It can be whatever, you know, this is, I don't even know. can't even tell you how old this is. Um, and went around all the edges to make the stained glass look kind of like it has a leaded glass around it. And that's all, that's all there is to this. I mean, I say that's all, it just took time. That's all, it just took some time. So, um, you know, and it's just a, it's a pad, it's a pad of, um, Bristol 11 by 17 Bristol paper. But you can do it again on any of your pads of paper, your mixed media, your any kind of a any kind of a sketchbook or journal. Just put you a piece of chipboard on top because of usually your tops. Let me get my hand. Well, that one. All right. So this mixed media, this one has a hard. 
this one you could just paint black and go from there because this is, has a hard chipboard. Um, but some, like this one, like this one, see, has a paper. This one has like a paper cover. So you'd want to put a piece of chipboard on this, on, on top of that, and paint it black. Okay, so that's how that's all I did. I've done on, um, on the cover there. So hopefully that just kind of makes a little sample. Hi, Devin Rex. Anybody else I missed? Oh, uh, thanks, Kathy Berg. Yeah, I was saying how I was watching you and Colleen. Did you see my little um, Bo Bunny book I was talking about on the show on your show? Uh, the little Bo Bunny book I I showed it earlier. Okay, so now let's go ahead. Let's do let's go ahead and do one giveaway now. Let's go ahead and do one giveaway now. Let's give away. Let's give away. Maybe I should put two, maybe I should put two in here. What do y'all think? Maybe I should give away both Shannon Greens. Maybe I should give them both away. What I do with the plus. <laughs> Here it is, the packaging and the other one. But anyway, here, let's go ahead and do this first. So um, because uh, Lady Jan said, the composition books fit in there, and that's probably why Marie sent them. So thank you, Marie S., for sending us the um, Shannon Green books, I mean, the Shannon Green wraps and the um, composition books. So I'm thinking that will fit in there. So let's go ahead and give away one of these now. Let's give away one of these now. I was going to give away just composition books too, but this has to have one. Well, let's do this here. So I'm going to give away this and then two of the pack that will go in there. And I'll stick these inside the package for you. But what it is, is one of Shannon Green's. Y'all just go look her up because you can buy these. Let me get a little thing here. Painted Custom Keepers. Um... At, at Shannon Green's, just look up Shannon Green, Eileen. Uh, you could probably find it and put a link in for us, Shannon, I mean, uh, Eileen. You could put a link in for us, Eileen. If uh, I think, uh, what do you call it, uh, Pecola might have already done it. But go ahead and put in a link, Eileen. Uh, give them both away and make Denise proud. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway... Um, yeah, so I'll put that in there. All right, so what we're going to do, don't do anything yet. So um, let me get um, random.org brought up. So how the giveaways work. Eh, hang on, I typed it wrong. Is when you see me type in go, don't do any numbers yet. When you see me type in go, Put in a number between 1 and 100. It doesn't matter how many people are here because it's the first person. The first person closest without going over. One number only. I can't stress this stuff enough, guys, because the mods will disqualify you. One number only between 1 and 100. And then when I bring up random.org, right here, they'll generate us a number. And the first first person closest without going over, okay? Is that how everybody got the rules? Got the rules. <laughs> and uh, after I type in stop, then there's no more numbers. Okay, there you go. All right, go. I typed it in so you can put in a number between 1 and 100. And I'll send one of Shannon Green's custom keepers and two of the little composition books. So y'all go for it. Because those will fit just perfect. So I'm sure that's why Marie said them. <laughs> and thanks, Lady Jan, for pointing that out. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody get your number. Don't dilly-dally. Don't dilly-dally. Because when I type in stop, then that's it. I'll count down. Get your numbers in. All right, ready? I'm going to count down. 10, 
nine. And this is inter this is fine for international. This will go in an envelope. So international is fine on this. So international, you can be in it too. Okay, just FYI. It's only the books. It's only when I send a book or a package that's so expensive international. But this will be an envelope. So it should be okay. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So let's pick a number, shall we? So we're at random.org. Okay, generate a number. 71. The first person closest to 71 without going over. Without going over. 71. So the first person closest to 71. And I'll give the mods a second to scroll back. And everybody can scroll back, but. <laughs> so the first person closest to 71. So I will send this out um, to whomever. <laughs> but I thought that was so that was nice of Marie to send these. And they're just and they they work like this. Look, see, they just work like that. And you just put in the composition books. Okay. All right. So who is the winner? Suzanne said one person. Let me give my mods a minute. Give my mods a minute. Where'd my pen go? <laughs> hang on let's see i might have to bring up I'll, I'll wait and see what my mods say or i'll bring up my uh youtube chat <clears throat> if need be yeah it's the first person closest without going over so whoever's the closest to 71 without going over. Scrap Girl had 69. Okay, so it's Scrap Girl. Scrap Girl had 69. Okay, so Scrap Girl, here's my email. Email me your address. Okay, email me your address, Scrap Girl. Congratulations. There we go. <laughs> okay. So congratulations, Scrap Girl. Did she see that she won? So that'll go to Scrap Girl. So you can build your little uh, Shannon Green custom keeper. Okay. Um, Hopefully she's, she saw, oh, there she is. There she goes, Scrap Girl 12. Send me your email, okay? I mean, your address, not your email. Send me your address so I can mail that out to you. And I do not share your addresses with anybody, not even with the mods. So just FYI, don't put you on the mailing list. If you ever get an email from me, it's a thank you or a return email. I don't email anybody. Trust me, I don't email anybody. Okay, so I might go ahead. Janet's saying I should give this one away too. Janet said, <laughs> put it back together. We'll do this one after in a little while. So let's put this one back together. Let me put this back in. Can I get it back in there with the <clears throat> with the uh, what do you call it? Okay, so I'm going to put that in here, and then let's put this in here, and then I'll put two, two of the, uh, what you call it's with it. So Janet said I should give the other two away as well. All right, I'll set this aside. We're not going to do it right now. Got to watch for a while. Watch for a while. Let's move my paints over here. I don't know. I was going to test those paints out, by the way. Maybe we'll leave that out. Maybe I'll test those paints. Those, those um, and just show you, you know, how they respond to pencils and other things. All right. So, so I need to keep this handy so we can give this away later. So thank you, Marie. Um, Janet, Janet says that Denise said that I should give it away. You're welcome, Scrap Girl. You're welcome. 
All right, so now I want to pull over here and um, let's look at our um, Realistic Portraits Grayscale Coloring Book. And um, I don't know that I'm going to copy hers exactly, but I'm just going to, you know, I got it there for reference. So this is one I did with Copics, as you can see. I did this one with Copics. I did not do anything to the background. So you can see what the grayscale looks like. She has grayscale in the backgrounds. And um, she has these for sale as a PDF. So if you want to print them out on nicer paper so that you could do a watercolor, you can print it out on a watercolor paper or whatever. But I just did this one with Copics and a little bit of white Posca. You can see there a little bit of white Posca for the details. But other than that, it's all Copics. Okay. Now, when I do this one, I might throw in some pencil too so we'll see all right so let's move all my little booklets over to the side let's get everything kind of out of the way all right so we're going to do this one i want to keep my little giveaway there so let's see let's go ahead and zoom back in one maybe that's good for now we can always zoom in if i start doing color pencil then we'll zoom in even more. So how, how's that look? Is that bright enough, guys? Is the brightness good? The color good? Is it look pretty good? Okay. Um, oh, uh, thank you, Judy. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fernanda. <clears throat> okay. So let I haven't pulled any markers yet or anything. So let's just pull some. I'll pull some Copics and I don't know. I'll, I'll get on um, the Copic Chows. And I got two of some of them. Like I got two, so I'll pick whichever one's the fullest. Um, the Copic Chows are um, the best is as a starter set for skin tones, and you can get them in a in dark skin and light skin. Um, but I'm just gonna pull some skin colors. I'll just grab I'll just grab them as I go. And then I think her hair, if I did her hair, she, the the picture that um Christine Karen did, she has brown hair. Do I want to do brown hair? Do I want to do black hair? Well, let's do brown hair. Let's see. So I'm gonna get a few brown. Oh, a few brown. I don't know. I'm just gonna get some different colors here. Maybe a little pink for her cheeks. I don't know if this one will be pink enough. Or that one is kind of gold. Oh, this one might be good enough for a pink. What else do I have up here? Let's see. Maybe a little brighter pink even still. Okay, we'll start with this. And maybe have green eyes. I don't know what color. I think she has brown eyes in the picture. But I think we'll do, maybe we'll do green eyes. And a green shirt. So I always do brighter green than it usually is. But let's pick some greens. <clears throat> and then let me get, uh, oh, okay, I've got this envelope to do some color testing on. All right. Hi, Lucia. Uh, yeah. And the thing about getting a set of the chow in the skin tones they they're not only are they you know i think you can they're like six in there i i can't remember if it's five or six in a set they have a light skin and a dark skin set and what's nice about them is you can use you you can get the whole a whole set of skin tones and use your uh, michael's or hobby lobby coupon on them you know all right, so let's see. So I'm going to, let's, we are, I like to start light. And I, again, I am no Copic expert. I'm just going to say, okay, that one's a little, I think I need the other one. That's this color, the uh, E00. One of them is more filled than the other. And I want the brush side. So that's the one that's got a weird something on the, here we go. Okay, so that, and I might have to end up filling. I don't know. Here's E002. So these two will start with. And then probably a little shade of, let's see, about E11. So I think these, these two will be good enough. And uh, 
Let's see, what about this one? This one is E11 as well. I think that's what I picked. Okay, let's go with these three. We'll go with these three colors, and then let's see what pink. For some rosy cheeks, that might be a little bright. Let's test this one. That's not quite pink enough, but that's a good color. I think I'll go with this, this. And just testing them out here, guys. E00 again. Okay, so I got that one already. All right, so let's put that away. All right, so here we go. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start out with just a nice light um, base coat all over her face, um, leaving probably a little bit of white highlights. But remember, now this is grayscale, so the gray is going to give you shadow. Is that close enough, guys? Maybe I should zoom in one more. Is that better? So the grayscale is going to give you some shadow to start with. And I found that the trick with Copics is for them to blend is you blend them with a wet edge. So if your edges get dry, then you need to go back in there and um, I think I need to fill this one. Let me fill it. Let me, let me refill this one. Hang on. Hang on. I'm just going to drop, put a few drops on it. You don't have Hobby Lobby in Canada, um, Devin says. And the thing about, um, and maybe I should pull out some pan pastels to do a test too, because I want you all to be able to see both. Um, pan pastels are awesome for skin. I'm just, I'm just putting a few drops. I can't do it too fast because it'll run down the side here. So, and you can take the little, you can take the, uh, you can take the nibs out and, oh, you can take them out and put some in, but I just usually just don't fill them that much. All right, so let's put this away. Hang on. So you can buy uh, Copic ink refills. All right. <clears> Hi, <throat> right, let's make a mess today. All right. Okay, back to work. Okay, thanks for popping in. <laughs> saying I, pop, I try to pop in people's streams sometimes too and just. All right, so I'm just kind of following the grayscale right now of what's already on the page. Can you all see? Am I close enough? Y'all let me know so I can zoom in more. And I'm going to go and do her lips as well. Any place there's uh, some gray scale. I'm just kind of using the light marker to kind of base in where I'm going. So having a gray scale is really easy to follow. So if you don't, if you don't do shading and pencils and stuff, you got something to kind of go, go from go with you can roll with it right and i'm going to leave some um you know some light areas here and i can do the details inside her eyes with pencil if i want to you can do it with marker too you can do it with it however you want okay i'm i'm going to go ahead and bring her cheek in a little here Just to get a start. Because you can keep adding, just keep building and building. You don't want to get it too dark because there's no going. You well, I guess you could cover it up with pencil, but there's no going back once you get it too too uh, dark. All right, so then let's see. Didn't know how to try this. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little more. 
And then as this is, as I'm putting this down, let me just take these caps off. Then I'm going to start blending while it's wet. Okay, so I'm putting a little bit of shadow. And then while it's wet, I'm going to soften it out. Okay, can y'all see how it's getting a little darker? And again, don't email me and tell me, you're doing it wrong, because I probably am. I, I'm not Copic certified. I don't, I haven't taken any Copic classes. It's just, <laughs> it's just how I've done it with practice. So, and I think that's probably true with most things, you, you know. You, it, you learn a lot just by doing it yourself. Not that there's anything wrong with classes. You know, don't get, don't email me on that. But this paper is very thin too. Remember, it's like copy paper thin. It's not really made for Copics per se, but it'll blend okay as long as you it's wet. As long as it has a wet edge. Um, let's see. Do I have any questions? Wonder. Devin said, I wonder if they're not going to carry them anymore. Oh, Pacola said that. Who who carry what? Um, Pacola, somebody not going to carry something? Or, or, or what's disappearing at what store, Pacola? <laughs> something must be disappearing at some store. And I just want to do a quick little marker rendering, and then we can maybe do a little uh, cope. I mean, uh, what do you call it? Shelly said that her Hobby Lobby is almost out of Americana paint. Um, I mine got really low a couple, maybe a month ago, when they had a sale. It they got rid of a lot, and I think what they do is they want to make sure that they get rid of all the paint that's been sitting there a while. This is just me, I don't know. I think they want to get rid of all the paint that's been sitting there a while so it doesn't get old and dried out. And then because mine came, mine filled back up again. Mine filled back up again after. Now, I'm not saying that's the case, I'm just saying this is what happened at mine. I don't want to forget that ear. So they may just be trying to get rid of all their stock before they restock because, you know, I don't know how long I, I've had my paints. As long as you shake them up, as long as you shake them up, you're usually pretty good uh, with it. But that may be the case. They may just be... Um, They might just want to, you know, make sure that they put in new. Um, I don't get her dimples too dimply, but I <laughs> got that a little too dimply. I'm gonna have to get out the uh, the blender. To me, the uh, Copic blender is like an eraser. It's like an eraser. It doesn't really. I don't. I don't know. I don't think of it as a blender. It's more like erases. It like lightens it. <laughs> it's not really a blender, so that and that's going to show until I until it dries. And again, this is on copy paper, so I hope it doesn't make like a little ring. <laughs> this is copy paper. It should dry okay. All right, so now let's uh, let's go ahead and put the caps back on here for a minute and put maybe a little bit of pink. A bit of pink in her lips. And go back to the E00. Let's blend that. They want to roll to walk towards me. <laughs> and do a little blend there. Just give her a little bit of pink in her lips. Maybe a little pink in her cheeks. 
Let's blend that out. I want to give her too pink of a cheek. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's go with this one. <laughs> too pink. It looks like she hit the blush a little hard. Let's go with this. And it should it should dry here. I mean it it look. See how wet it is? All right. Let that dry. Hopefully using that blender didn't ruin it. Because I can see it kind of smearing from that blender pen. I don't know if I can get rid of all that now. Let's see what we can do. The blender pen. I was trying to erase with it and it kind of made a... <clears throat> yeah, I got our cheeks now are a little pink. We'll just say she was out in the sun a little long. <laughs> um, I don't know who that is, Judy. I don't know who that is. I'm just trying to smooth it out as much as I can. <clears throat> Just take my time with it. And we can go in there with pencils, especially in our eyes. But I want to let, let's let that just kind of dry for a minute, because I'm going to end up going through the through the paper itself. All right. So now I want to get the lightest green that I picked. Let's see. Is this? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put some kind of olivey green in there. And I'll shade with uh, pencil. I'll shade with pencil. Uh, let's go ahead and go to her hair. Let's see. Do I want to start with kind of a golden brown? Let's see. Let's just go ahead and color it in. A light brown. With a couple little highlights. Of course, you can always go back into with Posca. We'll put a few coming down on our face here. A little shadow. A couple little hairs hanging down in her face. Okay, let's go to the next one. This one's a little squeaky. I'm going back to the lighter kind of golden brown. This is E13. And maybe have a little, a few of the little hairs like going across her ears. Like that. Maybe a little bit more up there. Okay. Um, oh, thanks, Carol. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, you know, it's nice just to show how you can have a grayscale as a start. Okay, so I'm going to put some of the same green that's in her eyes.
And again, I'm kind of trying to flick it because this is, you know, like I said, this is like copy paper. I mean, you know, it's thin. So you got to kind of work with what, what the paper is. You, you might want to do make your own copies on better paper. Okay, something like that. If we need to, we can add a little bit more color down her neck just a little. Okay. Let's see, what else do I want to do? All right, let's go ahead and get a couple pencils here. And my pen and darker green. sharpen these real quick so again these are Christine Karen if y'all missed the book this is realistic portraits grayscale coloring I did a flip of it a minute ago well a few minutes ago so if you want to see all the pages here's what the previous one I've done with Copics and um uh, Oh, we're doing another one. All right, let's sharpen these greens real quick. Oh, this one anyway. All right, the other thing that you want to know when you're doing uh, color book pages, grayscale or not, is the, and I'm going to do our eyebrows with, I'm going to get dark brown. Um, the black, like in the pupil, Dig out my color a lot here. Come on, I'm still digging here. I have a nice dark chocolate brown. Oh, let me sharpen these. Um, the blacks are not black, and especially if she's doing a grayscale book where you, she wants you to shade and blend, you're, it's not going to be black, like the nostril holes, your eyeliner, your pupils, they're not going to be black. So if you want them to be black, you're going to have to make them black. And that's what I do with a, I'll do one eye so you can see the difference. Okay, I'll do her eyelashes, just so you can see how what a difference it makes when you do the blacks. Of course, I always add a little extra longer lashes, but... Okay, so look at the difference in the, with the black. See how it just makes it stand out? Hi, Mama Four. Christine, I know I'm probably missing people coming in. Thanks, everybody. Arts and crafts. Okay, so wherever you want the really dark blacks, you're going to have to put that in yourself. Don't just leave it because it, you think it's black. <laughs> you know, you think, oh, it's already got the black on there. No, you need to go in there. And 
and keep the eyelashes kind of thin and don't ever do eyelashes here i show this all the time with uh let me show with the sharpie marker so it shows up when you have your eyes okay you want your eyelashes to be kind of like this a thick and thin of course i'm using a thicker marker here but i want you to be able to see it do not do this <laughs> just saying don't do that. Flick them out. Have some longer, some shorter. Okay. And that may be self-explanatory, but, you know. All right. So I'm going to do her nostrils. The corner, just a little bit in the corner of her lip, lip there. Maybe there'll be a little bit more dark right around some hairs. Maybe right around her ears there might be a little darker. You know, any place you want that extra uh, right in here, that you want that extra contrast, you know, make it really dark. But especially in the pupils of the eyes, you want them to be very black, very black. And then I usually go in here with a white um, Posca and add just a little bit more highlight, sometimes at the very bottom the eye and then if i want to do any shading uh, on the pupil and i'll hold this up in a minute do that but always put a shadow in the eye all right so let me just show you what we got so far all right we haven't done our eyebrows yet but you want to take like a blue i always use blue slate and let me do one eye so you can see the difference it makes. And I usually put a little bit right above the lashes too. But look at the difference, how, I hope it shows up. Look at the difference, just putting that little bit of blue and it doesn't really show up on camera. It's looking gray, but it's this color. That little bit of shadow and here's no shadow. Okay, just put that little bit of shadow in there with the blue. I wish it would show up better. So it makes the eyeball look round, which it is, and not just flat. See how the, this list looks flat? But if you put that little bit of shading, a little bit of shading makes the eyeball look round. Now, let me do this one. Okay. Can y'all see and tell any difference? And you can always put just a little... Just a little bit of tiny touch of highlight in the corner of the eye. All right, now let me do her eyebrows. And I always like the eyebrows. Look how thin. Well, I'll, I'll do one side and then the other. Hi, Kenneth. Are y'all still with the tour? Hiya, Sammy. <laughs> Sammy, have you colored in this? Although I did that one a little much. <laughs> A little extra flare, a little extra flick. Have you colored in um, this grayscale book by um, Christine Karen? Have you colored in this one yet, Sammy? Sammy's an excellent colorist. If you like color book channels, um, Sammy is one to follow if you don't already. All right, so I'm going to put a few little flicks of the hair in there. I'm waiting to see if Sammy, oh, thank you, if Sammy's done that. Okay, so now I've just done a little bit first layer of some light brown. <laughs> you haven't, you got it, but you haven't touched it? Oh my gosh, Sammy. Uh, and I'm just in this, this is just with Copic so far. It's just with Copics, and now I'm doing pencil in the eyes. And so I'm going to flick in some more eyebrows on this side. 
And I always make their eyebrows a little thicker than they are usually. I just like the way a few extra hairs look. And then I'll take a dark brown and just put a little bit of shadow in the bottom of that. Because she has dark brown hair. Just a little extra, little extra flicking. Now I might just do a little bit more shadow under the underneath the eye here. And this is where I usually, because I'm not a purist. Oh, you got to only use, if you're using Copics, oh, you can only use markers. You can only use pencils. You can only use pan pastel. Oh, yeah, I'm going to use whatever works. I'm going to use whatever works. So I'm just going to give her a little bit more makeup. Just a little bit more makeup here on her eyes. So my point in, in this is to show you this is a great way to practice your skin tones and your skin coloring. If you have a gray scale book, now, again, I think she did all hers in watercolor. I'm pretty sure hers are all in watercolor. But um, let's go to me. So you, you have something to start with. Okay. You have your, your, your shadows, your grays are already done for you. Okay. I did a flip of this book earlier. So if you missed it, just go back and look after a while. And, and just as a reminder, when you, um, if you go back and look like my videos are usually three to three and a half hours long. If you only see an hour and a half and no chat, the video is not fully rendered yet. It can take an hour, two hours, sometimes it's even been a half a day for the video to fully render. So when you see the chat up, it's probably fully rendered. Okay. So, you know, just FYI, if you uh, go watch a recording, and that's not just mine, that's on anybody's live videos. If the, uh, uh, it can take a little while to fully render the video so that you get the whole video. And some people take down the chat. Not everybody leaves a chat up. And also if you edit your chat, I mean, if you edit your video, if you edit a live video, it will get rid of your chat. So if you don't want your chat to be removed, don't edit your video. So I don't edit, I don't edit anything. <laughs> Thank you, Suzanne. Okay, <clears throat> so now you can sit here and start shading and doing, you know, if you want some more little shading or, you know, if you want a few of these little hairs to be uh, like kind of come across her eyebrow here, you can add these in with some pencil. On the other one here, I did that with Posca. She had blonde hair, so I added um, some Posca highlights you can see right there, and I added a little Posca. Now, there's no pencil shading in her yet. I just did just the Copics and the um, the Posca highlights there and the little bit of blue shadow with pencil in her eye, the blue the, uh, blue shadow in her eye. But everything else is just um, Copics. So I haven't I haven't done what I'm doing to her, you know, adding more um, adding more uh, details. So she has some little hairs kind of coming across her bangs. I used to wear my hair like this for, oh, probably 20, 25 years. I used to have my hair this short. And then when, on my 50th birthday, I said, I'm going to grow my hair out. And I've had it down my back ever since. Because <laughs> I wore it this way my whole life. Well, not my whole life. When I was a teenager, I had like hair down to my waist. But then um, probably, I don't know, 21, 22, I cut it, my hair like this and I wore it like this all the rest of my um, adult life until, like I said, when I hit 50, I said, I'm going to grow my hair out. Why not? You know, so I did. Janet, too, she has long hair. I don't think Janet's ever had short hair, though. Have you ever had short hair, Janet? So, and, the, and you can still see some of the grayscale in the background because she did that 
to paint have painty backgrounds again let me bring out her thumbnails here see how the backgrounds all have some watercolory painty backgrounds <clears throat> okay let's see i might do a little gold gel pen let's see if this one's working a little gold gel pen on the earring here Make it a little more big sparkle. And then maybe um, just a dot of Posca in here to give it a little bit of a little highlight there. Maybe a little highlight right there. No, that's too much. It's just going to say where the little hole in her ear is. So, yeah. Okay, let me go back to some more little hairs here. She has a few little hairs kind of flicking out and over her ears. Maybe a couple right here. So you can kind of see. Now if we want to do a little bit more... Let's do a little bit more pink, maybe, in her lips. And a little bit of pink. Let me just pull some colors here. Let's put a little bit more oh, pinky purple, lavender in the corners of her lips here. Maybe a couple lip lines, Just subtle. Don't don't get crazy. And then a little bit of a little bit of brown. Just give it a little more shadow and depth. Thank you, Miss Sammy. And there's a there's a color and chat with Sammy. And she'll always go, hiya. <laughs> so y'all go follow Color and Chat with Sammy. <laughs> and that's with the U, Color with the U. She's in the UK. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Were y'all asking about the book again? Yeah, here we go. And it's, I got it on Amazon, Realistic Portraits, Grayscale Coloring Book, Christine Karen. And she also has, and I have a couple of these books as well. Some of the fairies, and uh, this one right here, I showed y'all. I colored this one in pan pastels. That guy right there, uh, I showed that earlier. So, this is the one that we're working out of. Just tore them out. All right, let's see. What else do I want to do here? Let's go back to a little bit more shadow in the corners of her. Out there, maybe just a tiny bit more shadow. And I don't have my, I don't have any, uh, you know, the little uh, little divot there. She has. I'm just imagining the lights just kind of smacking her in the face here. But I can do a little bit more white blend because I'm much more proficient with pencils than I am with uh, Copics. So you can always just go back in there and blend and shade and do whatever. Very, very subtle, very light. Maybe just a little bit more. And again, you might not even see this on camera. Just a little bit more subtle blending. Very subtle. This looks like your aunt. She 
just some soft softening of the marker. Well, make sure your marker is dry, which this is. But uh, don't try to go over wet marker or, or you'll be pilling your paper, especially thin paper like this. So you can go in there and start blending a little more. Maybe I'll soften that little bit of that pink that I added with the marker. I got a little overzealous on. And then just a little bit dark in the ears here. But yeah, I used to have, hang on, let me go, hang on. One moment, please. One moment. I pulled this old picture of me and Hubster that I have sitting up on the shelf. This is Hubster and I. Let me think a minute. So, uh, 30 years ago. This is me. <laughs> this is me. <laughs> me and Hubster 30 years ago. There's... <laughs> There's me and Hubster when we were young and th thinner. Oh my gosh. It's not wanting to focus. There we go. So, yeah. <laughs> Look at those two cute, cu that cute couple. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, anyway, I keep that one sitting on our shelf. So, yeah. All right. Let's see. What else? Got my exercise running up and down those stairs. Let's get just a little bit more shading. <laughs> I know. Everybody was back then, Suzanne. All right, let's see. Do I want to add anything else to her? Or do I just kind of like her like that? See, some of the grayscale has like a watercolory kind of <clears throat> like a little bit of a modeling. Like, see, it looks like it's like a watercolor would look. But if you don't like that, then just go in there with your um, your pencils and you can blend it out if you want. Or you just leave it if you like that look in this book. Remember this, you know, you're you're going by what uh, Grayscale uh, Christine Karen has put there for you. Maybe a little more chin definition there. But, it, you know, it's good to play different ways. And, you know, if, if you're worried about, well, I might make a mistake or I don't like this, then make you a copy and practice. Make you a little copy and practice it. <laughs> so yeah i see the lights hitting her like right here so she's gonna have that direct light right into her face might have a little bit more so i think i'm gonna call her done this girl she's not she doesn't have any pencil in her yet so if I wanted to do anything with her, it'd be the same thing. You know, I can get in here and start, you know, adding adding more um, blending. Adding more blending if I want to. Okay, so you can just keep working as much as you want. All right. So, yeah. 
So there we go. That's using the Realistic Portraits Grayscale Coloring Book. Christine Karen. And again, just to kind of do a flip, I showed it at the beginning. So I might pick another one. Would y'all like me to do one in, in pan pastel? Let's move. Let's, let's, uh, let me just pick up all the markers then real quick. Just so I have some room because pan pastels are going to take up some space. All right. Here. I've got all my markers right in front of me right there. <laughs> Sammy, of course we're not going to say no. All right, let's see. Let's put this one over there. Put over the gold. All right, let's clean the little area up here. Move the pencils. I don't mind the pencils being out. And these green markers. Let's put them back over there. Okay. All right. So I have to pick another page. All right. I think this is a good, I mean, we're not too close, but it's close enough to be clear. All right. Let me get out some pan pastel stuff. As long as the cats aren't in here. All right. Mm. So here's my little box that I keep my pan pastel tools in. And I always say this, the little tools and the sponges that uh, uh, pan pastels have is not the same as a makeup sponge. They are different. They're, I don't want to say they're oily because they're not oily, but they have some kind of a feel to them that makes the pan pastel stick to them but at release at the same time plus you can use the sponges to like little palettes until Bernadette makes us a palette out of that stuff but this is the this is the brand I mean it's called soft with two F's so you want to get that and you can buy the little replacement because once you have the the tool the plastic tool you don't have to replace those same thing for these little uh, things. These You can buy these separate. So you can just buy these and so you can keep the little wood tool thing here. So there's that. You'll need a, a kneaded eraser, which, you know, it picks up. So if you want to erase anything or put highlights or anything, a kneaded eraser is what you would like to do with that. And I know that you can get, you can get uh, different sets. I have the whole set with all the trays, but you can get the, you can get individual uh, sets with um, skin tone and a port. This, it's called skin tones and portrait. I don't know which is which and what comes in which, but you want to if you just want to start practicing and playing with doing faces or portraits or even a color book face. And, you know, I did uh, two weeks ago, I think it was, I did, a, uh, I did a show, a stream, where I showed a whole bunch of different color books with that have faces in them. Hi, Wolfie, Carla, anybody else, CB, Kim's, anybody else I missed, Maya, um, anybody else I missed, Abigail. Welcome, welcome. Uh, get you a portrait or a skin tone set to practice with. Or you can buy them individually, just the little, uh, little pans, and they have the little plastic screwed lids on them. You can get them individually at Blick. Now, the thing about them, people go, well, they're so expensive. If you bought the, all the sets... They are expensive to buy them all. I'm just going to say um, I was gifted them, but they are expensive to buy them. The thing is, um, they're not individually any more expensive. Actually, I think they're a little cheaper than Copic markers. So one of the little pans might cost you... Um, I don't know, six, seven dollars, no, five to seven, something like that. 
whereas um, that's the same price as a Copic. I don't know what colors I'm going to need other than some skin. Maybe we could try to, let's see. She has a dark skin girl, let's see, or guy. Um, she has one guy that's kind of darker. I was going to try to maybe do it. Let's maybe I'll do a guy. Let's see here. I'm looking for this guy here. He has like a five o'clock shadow. Maybe we can do him with a five o'clock shadow. Let's see. Let's see, do I want to, hang on guys, look at something real quick. I was going to say, do I want a five o'clock shadow reference? Um, I don't know, maybe that'll help. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. So let's see. Let me move these out of the way. I want to keep this here because I want some kind of uh, paper here that's smooth so I don't pick up any little paint splotches. Because when you're doing, you, it's like a, you'll get a rubbing. You'll get a rubbing of whatever's underneath. Yes, you can buy the storage tray separate. And... Um, but I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, you probably don't want to go out and buy a whole big set until you know for sure <laughs> that you're going to enjoy pan pastels. I'm going to pull a couple of blues. I'm going to try to keep it as, like, uh, not as, I'm going to keep it as uncomplicated as I can color-wise. All right, let's see. Um, let's get another... I'm just looking through the colors here. That may be enough. No, I think I might need one more darker. Yeah, well, I'll just try to mix my. Yeah, let's get. I'll get one more gray color. Let's see. Maybe a maybe a couple of grays. We'll see. Okay. And white. I'm just gonna pull. All right. <clears throat> so we're gonna start with this. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and just start with, again, a, um, a base. Hang on, guys. Let me do something real quick. I want to find kind of a um, reference for a uh, five o'clock shadow. <laughs> That's what I, I couldn't think of the word. I want a five o'clock shadow reference. Hang on. Just so I want to get it kind of real, real like, realistic like. Let's see. And Do I have any questions? Where can you get? You can get pan pastels from the pan pastel company, Maya. Or you can get them at Blick. If you want them in the trays, go to um, go to Blick. I mean, go to Pan Pastel. Hang on. Pan Pastel uh, Company. You just put in Pan Pastel. That is that is the brand. That is the brand name. Pan Pastel. All right, am I missing anything? I thought, let's see, Devin says, where'd it go? I thought two sets of a few repeating colors, but the second set was on sale. Seems enough. Okay, so you mean the skin tone set, Devin? The skin and the portrait sets? All right, so let's see. Let me get a, 
get something to blend on here. We'll go with this one. So I do my blending on top of... Um, I do my blending on one of the sponges. Um, I don't use the sponges for actually using the stuff because they're just so they're big. I want something tiny. And to clean your sponge, clean your tools off, I just use a paper towel, which I have to get one. Here. Grab a paper towel and you can just clean them. I, I mean, people say you can wash these. I don't find that I need to wash them. Um, I wear them out before I wear the tips out before I wash. I need to wash them. Okay, so I'm going to start with just a basic, um, just a just a you know layer, a layer of skin. Now remember, he's got grayscale on him already, so you've already got shadows here, and it's and it's a watercolory look, right? So I'm just going to start with just a base coat of color. And I do this regardless of any, like, you know, I do dark skin, light skin. I do every color skin colors. If you go on my Instagram, you'll see where I've done portraits, my own portraits, not color book pages. I mean, you'll see my color book pages too, but you'll see my portraits that I've done. Um, just get a base coat of color on him here. Let me see. Where's my phone? Oh. Let me show you on Instagram. Would you always? No, I not necessarily, Tracy. And it depends on if I'm doing my own, if I'm doing portraits of people, this is a color book page. It's already got the shadows laid in there for me. So it's a little different than doing a full on portrait from scratch. Let me see uh, here. Let me go to my. The other thing that when I'm doing my own portraits, I start with tone tan paper. Let me get my, come on, Instagram, you're so slow. Why is Instagram so slow? Oh, let me, let me see here. What do I got? Do I have my Wi-Fi off? Do I have my, let me see here. Um, I'm looking for my tone tan. And I used to use the Tone Tan Sketchbook paper, which is the exact same color, but then they came out with Tone Tan Mixed Media. And the Tone Tan Mixed Media, let me grab one sheet out of here. Let me get tear out. And this is, um, comes 15 sheets in the pad, 9 by 12. And the thing about the mix me, it's the exact same color as the tone tan sketchbook paper, but it's thicker. This is cardstock. This is um, 184 pound or 300 G GSM GM GSM. It's 184, so it's it's cardstock weight. So this is what I do all my portraits on now. But yeah, it gives you a mid-tone. It's kind of like, see how it gives, gives me the gray here? If you've got something to build on, to me, it's just, I like that. So for when I say I start with a certain color, usually when I start a portrait, I actually draw it out in white and tan. And uh, white and um, uh, sienna. But... Because I like to pull, I like to find my highlights. And here, I'll show you a dog portrait, but it's the same kind of thing. So this is the portrait I did for my mom of her dog. So the white is what I can, I can start with the highlights, not necessarily every little blend. I mean, not every little hair, but I sketch it out white. Um, let me, let me find a, let me find a couple portraits. Here's one I did of a commission of, um, Dr. Who. They're all over on Instagram. Um, here's one that was a port. This was a commission. It, this is in process. So you see how it starts with the light color on the tone tan because you're starting with the tone tan paper. You can start building from your highlights. Let's see here. 
and I always show Ken, I love Kenny's little granddaughter. There's Kenny's granddaughter. And again, if you want to see them better or clearer, go, go over to the, um, go over to my Instagram because it's not picking up the colors really well on my phone, but there's Kenny's granddaughter there. I, I've done two of Kenny's granddaughter. I did one when she was younger. Oh, what else is in here? Here's another dog portrait. That one was for Edwin Boyette. And these are the pan pastel ones. That's why I'm showing them. Here is, um, here's our faithful mess. There's faithful mess. And again, she doesn't show up. Her coloring doesn't show up well on my phone. It shows up better on Instagram. Here's where I did Connie's um, bearded lizard. This, um, let's see what else. I really want to find more pan pastels. I try to put the pan pastels around. Here's where I did Miss Melody's. Well, I don't know. I don't want to make Miss Melody sad. I did Miss Melody's puppy. Oh, here's Sammy. Here's uh, Sammy's. Um, there's Sammy's little, um, I don't know if Sammy's still here, but this is a uh, color and chat with Sammy. And that's her little puppy there. Um, Suzanne, I add, if I'm doing like, for instance, hair, let me see if I can find a sample. I might block in the hair with acrylic paint and then build on top of it. Build a pan pastel and pencil on top of some paint and clothing. Let me see here. Now, this one is uh, the this is what I'm getting ready to show you is not um, okay. Here's a good example. This is this is just this this is not pan pastel. This is just pencil, and this is um, reading with Jen Pug's little boy. Look at his. That's all paint right there. And there's probably a light coat of paint as a base in his hair. And there's this is all pencil, though. There's no pan pastel in this one. So that's all pen, color pencil. But I might use paint in clothing and hair. I rarely, I don't can't remember ever really using paint on their faces. It's either, although there's Jan reading with pugs. <laughs> um yeah, so the, the faces are either pan pastel and or pencil. <laughs> oh, I love you, Jen. So anyway, let me go back to the five o'clock shadow thing there. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get crack a on him. So to start blending out, I think I need a little darker peach or peachier color. Let's get another color out here. Hang on. Go back into my trays here. And I'm going to do a little more because he's kind of rugged looking. So I'm probably going to use these two colors and I'm going to go ahead and put some on here and I'm going to start blending and mixing on my sponge. Okay, so I'm going to mix on the sponge. And I'm going to start. Um, I just wanted some kind of color on him just to get him started. And I'm using her grayscale as my template or my pat, my map. I'm using her grayscale as my map to get started here. Now, the other thing, too, about um, pan pastels, what's nice is if you get it anywhere you don't want it, you can erase it. Or you can add your highlight. So I'll do that here in a minute. But... Um, once you spray it, though, once you put the fixative on it, then you and I use a final fixative because to me, it, it doesn't smell as badly as the workable fixative. But even the workable fixative, I wouldn't trust to be able to remove pan pastel. But you do what you know, you do what you need to do. But I use a I use a final fixative. Aw, oh, you're welcome. Oh, I'm so glad you do. 
I'm so glad you do, Jen. Yeah, Kenny, Kenny has uh, two of my, uh, of her granddaughter done with uh, portraits for her. One was all pencil, I think, and the other one had, uh, the other one had pan pastel. So like, look, see, I'm kind of got it right here and right here. You can, you're going to get them, you're going to, it's not like chalk though. One of the things that I love about pan pastel is they're not chalky. They, they're different than your regular pastel. See, I never, yes, I use a, I use a Grumbacher final fixative. Uh, one of the things about, um, I, I waited so long to get pan pastels was because I thought, they would be chalky and I don't like pastels. I mean, I've had to draw with them and, you know, life classes or whatever, you know, you have to use pastel or chalk. And, um, but I didn't, I never, <laughs> never enjoyed working with uh, pastels because they're so dry and chalky and I don't like that dry feel. So I, I, I was always hesitant to get uh pan pastels and then someone goes no no they're not like that at all and they're not they are not <laughs> they are not like uh regular pastels or just they just i can't even tell you how they're they're not uh they're not as chalky and dusty now you can see they 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 dust up a little but you know you can see that there but they're, it's not the same, I, and I can't explain it. If you never tried them, just go buy you one <laughs> or two, you know. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of clean my clean my uh, tool off here. And I'm going to go to the other side here because now I'm going to get my blue and my gray, and I'm going to kind of mix some of these up and have a couple uh, colors here, of the blue and the gray, because I want to do his... I'm going to do his, uh, the blue areas, but also some in his face. He's very shadowed, and the 5 o'clock shadow is a, a blue-gray, kind of like, that's a Payne's gray color. So I want to start getting some of these colors in here. Maybe even a little more of the blue-blue, the baby blue. Get a little more of that baby blue down there. Okay, and you can keep darkening it up. And his hair is brown, and but he's got all these. Um, he's got a five o'clock shadow. So I want to try to capture that. Maybe even just a little bit of brown in there. And then after you spray it, if you want another darker layer or get more depth, then you can add another layer. Let me get up and do some darkening in his hair here. And it kind of just fades off into the background, as you can see. She doesn't have a defined uh, line on the top of his head. It just kind of fades off into the background. And this side of his face is much darker. He's got his little brow wrinkles kind of going there. I'll, and you can soften all this. You got, but you got to get the color on there. Okay. Kind of that's where his hairline kind of comes down to here. All right, let's see. What am I missing in chat? I'm sure I'm missing some things. Thanks, everybody, for being here, hanging out, playing. 
and see how I've got some right there. You want to make sure if you got any smudges anywhere that you get rid of those before you um, spray it. Hang on, guys. Let me get my other needed eraser over there. Get some blue gray going on down in here. You can always just clean your clean off the excess on your on your uh, paper towel, and then you have less on the tool, so you can blend real softly. And just keep cleaning your tool because you're picking it up every time you go in here like this. Start feathering it out. All right, let's see. Who else? Had, hi, Kathy Arbor, Maya, Kieran. I know I'm probably missing someone. Jeanette, Jeanette. But blending on the sponge to me is just ideal. And I and I've asked Bernadette at Pan Pastels a numerous times. Can you please make us a palette out of this stuff? <laughs> Make us a palette out of the same material that the sponges are made out of so we can uh, use them for a palette. As far as I know, that hasn't happened yet, but we'll keep we'll keep asking. <laughs> uh, all right, a little bit darker here. So it does take a while, even with pan pastel. But look how quick this is compared to, like, let's say you're doing this in color pencil. Look, I mean, we've done this in about, about less than 10 minutes. If you try to just get this far with color pencil, it would take you a lot longer. Trust me, I know, because I do I do portraits just in color pencil. And there's no way you can get this quick uh, of a base done with uh, with color pencils that quickly. So just FYI. And I might move to a smaller tool. I have the pointy tool. Let's see, where is it? Somewhere in here. What do I do with my pointy? What do I do with my pointy tool? Well, I don't see it. Oh, here we go. Um, so you have these are the three shapes of the tools. You have the flat one like this. And you have the round and the pointy. Now you're going to go through if you if you buy any of if you buy this tool and these little uh, caps here. I'm going to uh, she's uh, no no can't get up here, baby. The cat got in the pan pastels one time and she was red, yellow, and blue. She had primary streak on her for like a month. But you'll wear these down pretty quickly. These pointy ones, and you can turn them over. You can turn them over or you can just turn the tool over and use it this way. But you can use both sides of it, but you will wear these down fairly quickly. Okay. Now, oh, and what I was going to show you is, I don't know if I'm far enough along here to show this yet. Hang on, let me get a little bit more. Let me get a little bit more uh, shadow in him. But what, what I wanted to show you is, is with the pan pastels, what you can do is, mm, let me get another tool here so I can, because I don't want to get rid of all that color that I got on there right now. <clears throat> Let's go over here. So after you get in a lot of your uh, color and you want highlights, let me let me just let's just say I had done this whole cheek right there, and you want a nice bright cheek. You just take your um, you take your uh, kneaded eraser, and and if you haven't sprayed it, you can just go in there and look. See, see how you can just pull that right out, and you can do that anywhere. Like 
the tip of his nose. Maybe he has a nice sharp edge going down the nose there. And you got to just keep cleaning it because you're picking up a lot of pastel. Every time you touch it, you're picking up a lot of pastel. So you got to keep cleaning your kneaded eraser. Okay. So let's say he's got a highlight right there. See how quick that is? Right there. His bottom lip. Maybe right here. Wherever you want to highlight, you can just go in there and and pop out a highlight <laughs> just by it with your eraser. So, you know, you can't just do that with your color pencil. Not that easily anyway. I found color pencil very uh, tedious to try to erase. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to go back to this one that has the blue and the gray. And I'm going to go back in here and start working a little more in this five o'clock shadow here. And then with pencil, you can always get in there and do some little individual hairs. Let me see. Let me get a... Hang on. What is it, baby girl? I was looking for something. I don't know if I can find it real quick. I'm just going to try to flip through my samples here and see if I can find Norman. Because he's got the best five o'clock shadow that I have on hand. Oh, well, uh, but Gazbot's got a little bit here. Oh, there's our Shannon Green. Oh, hang on. And here's like Mistel. Now, these are all pencil. There's not, uh, there's not pan pastel in these. But I'm trying to find my Norman with the five o'clock shadow. Hang on. I don't know if he's in this stack or not. I got quite the stack here. Yeah, that one's not very good as an example. I thought he was in here. It's a really it's a per oh, here we go. All righty, here we go. So I've got a couple five. This is Gazbot. He's a he's a a youtuber so after i did the coloring see you can kind of see where i went in there with some little individual little hairs see little individual little hairs in there on the beard along the side of the face there see the little hairs and the same thing for <laughs> some of y'all might recognize him see how i go back in and do individual little hairs So you can go in there and put little, this is a little past a five o'clock shadow. <laughs> uh, so, but you can, uh, and this is all with pencil, uh, paint, some paint in his jacket, but this is all pencil. This was before I started using pan pastel. Yes, it's Daryl. Uh, before uh, I started using uh, pan pastel. So this is all pencil except some paint in the clothing there and then pencil on top. But you, uh, what I wanted to show you was the beard. See how you can go in there and do little hairs to make it look more uh, real. So we're, although we're starting with a flat uh, flat base here we can always go on I've got to watch the cats because they're gonna uh, uh, no, okay you're gonna have to yeah we're gonna have to go out babe you we'll have to close the door we can't have you in the pan pastels Ooh, can't have you in the pan pastels okay so that's what I wanted to show see right now it's kind of flat looking but we can go in there and add little individual hairs um, to do that. Okay, so let's see. Oops, I want this blue one. So right now I've got kind of, I want to get that kind of gray, blue, um, under shadow. Let's just kind of soften that just a little. Hi, Suzanne. Yes, Suzanne. Got a question? 
Oh, thanks, Mama Four. Mama says, I love that, Daryl. Yeah, I got a Glenn, too. But Glenn doesn't have, he just has a little bit of, he just has a little bit of, <laughs> so there's our Glenn. Yeah. Okay, let's see. It goes a long way. The pan pastels are so concentrated, it, it goes a long way. The paint is so good. Love the jet. Oh, thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> All right. So I want to just kind of get, and again, it, it can take a while to, um, it can take a while to build this up, and I don't really want to hurry on it, you know. I just kind of want to take my time, and then after I do this, I'll spray it. Let me show you my spray. And don't accidentally, let me show you what I accidentally did one time. Look at these, uh, these uh, spray. They both say final fixative. Look, be very careful. I use matte, but look, one day I accidentally bought gloss. You don't want to use this. You want to save this for, I don't know what. I, I accidentally bought it and I never use it. You want matte because they look so much alike. So you want to get, make sure you have matte. Okay, matte. And spray it outside. So when I, when I do spray this, I do a BRB and I go outside and spray it outside. I don't don't spray that stuff in your house. <laughs> okay, don't spray that in your house. All right. If you have any questions, remember put it in caps. I'm gonna work on him for about. I'll work on him for about until about 11:30. Then we'll do the other giveaway. Um, I'm gonna go ahead because Janet said to, and Denise would say to as well. Give away the other. Um, Shannon Green journal with the uh, with the what you call it. Let me get the pointy tool. The Shannon Green journal with a couple of the uh, little composition books in it. Okay, I've got to I got to clean that edge up right there. So. All right, there we go. So let me go ahead and go ahead and get some shadows in here. It looks like he has a black eye now, but it'll, it'll soften out. This side of his face is more in shadow. So, um, Just gonna get some nice dark shadows on this side of his face, and then I can always go in and pick out the highlights and blend softly. Blend okay. This tool's this one's getting a little worn down from the last time I used it. Okay, now I'll get a little bit of the peach color. Let's go back to this side, kind of feather that in. I hope y'all are. Am I staying in camera? Can y'all see what I'm doing here? Darken this side up a little. And then get my But just take your time when you're doing something like coloring, when you're coloring um, a page with pan pastels or, or doing a portrait. You want to take your time. You know, don't you don't want to rush through it. You want to just kind of 
you know, blend and take your time and So you see how it's building up? And then if you want any kind of highlights again, you can always just go in here and you know, maybe just pick out a little bit right there. Maybe just a little fix that little nose there. Okay, what's your preferred coloring books to work on? Light grayscale or plain line art? Um, I, I only have a couple of books like this, um, color, uh, Sammy. I don't have many grayscale, like anything like this with major. This is major grayscale. I'm trying to, I'm looking at my bookshelf and trying to think of what ones are really true grayscale because this is a true grayscale. <laughs> Right. I don't have any many that are like this, so I don't work in them often. For me, it's a little more because I'm so used to doing my own portraits. Having to use someone else's shading is a little. Um, I don't want to say tricky because it's not really I don't want to say tricky. It's just a little I'm working a little different because I'm using somebody else's placement of shading that I'm used to just putting my own shading in, you know what I mean? So it's a little, um, it's just a little different doing it on somebody else's shading because I'm used to doing my own shading. And as I'm sure you are too. But I, I mean, I enjoy it. And here's what I like about doing this because I can show people how to do stuff. So it's, you know, it's a little different for me to do it this way because I'm used to doing it my way. But what's nice is I'm able to show people how to do it. Where the, if they don't do portraits, if they don't draw, um, this is a way for me to show you how you can shade. Right? Yeah, there you go. Tracy's going, what do you prefer, Sammy? What way do you like to do? You see how it's building up slowly? And there's a bit of a mess around here. You know, look around the edges. I'll just erase that. Just make sure you erase it before you spray it. Because once you spray it, you're not going to be able to get back to white. Let's put a little more blue right in there. Oops, got a little too much brown. Let's go ahead and just erase that off. Kind of soften that edge. Let me go back to my blue here. I'm using two different um, tools. One has more blue, one has more brown. Yeah, it does, Sammy saying, yeah, if you have a grayscale, even a super light grayscale, it helps you as a beginner to see where to shade. And that's just so true. That's so true. Um, and I just, you know, there was a little excess right there. So I went, and you just kind of blow away. Make sure, guys, if you accidentally, and I don't want to sound, <laughs> if you accidentally get a little, uh, blow a little, when you're doing like that and you get a little spit, make sure that you don't go over that spit. I mean, I mean, even the, just the slightest little, little droplet, do not <laughs> hit it with the heat gun, wait till it dries. But if you go over that with your pan pastels, that will probably not erase because you've added water into the mix. And if you add water into the mix, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be hard to get rid of that. You'll probably almost have to paint over it. I didn't do it on this one, but I have done it before. And it's like, what happened? What is that little, why won't that little streak go away? <laughs> I fly. 
why won't that little streak go away? It's because you put spit on it. <laughs> oh, so I'm just saying. Okay, let's get a little bit of that brownie color there. So you just got to build it up slowly. And then when you have any kind of uh, areas where you've got it on the paper, just kind of pick it up with your kneaded eraser and keep your area clean. Keep your fingers, you know, I've got a damp baby wipe to the side here that I just wipe off any excess that gets on my fingers. So you can keep your um, page clean. And again, I'm working on another piece of paper here, so you might be seeing some of that too. So let's just get rid of any little bit of... Now you can see right here from her book, out of her book, see there's a sharp line right there. There's a sharp line like where she made the copies for the book. But you can always just take, take some blue. If you don't want that harsh line there. Whoops, that's the wrong. See, I picked up the wrong tool. I picked up the brown one. I'm using a brown tool and a blue tool. Um, you can just kind of kind of fade that off. Let's put a little white in there. And you can just kind of fade that in. So you don't have a line right there from the copy in the book. But she made it to look watercolory, right? She made it to look like a watercolor, the grayscale. But you can always just kind of go over it and kind of put a little white in there just to get rid of that harsh little straight edge. This part doesn't bother me. The watercolor part doesn't bother me, but there's like a little edge there where the copy, the copy was. So I want to kind of get rid of that line. This part isn't what bothers me. The watercolor part. Okay, so now let's go back in with the blue again. If y'all have any questions, put them in caps. Oh, thank you, uh, Pacola. Yeah, I do have a pan pastel playlist. And I will um, put this one in there as well. All right, let's put a little more. A little blue-gray color in here. In his five o'clock shadow. Let's put a little bit more in there. So you just kind of build it up. Build it up. <clears throat> Same thing for his lip. Maybe a little more gray down in here. Let me go back to the brown. And maybe I'll go back to the dark blue. Let me start thinking about roughing this up just a little. And again, you can put details in with pencil. I'm going to do his eyes and stuff with pencil. But I want to get the base on here with the pastel. Just so you can see how you can get so much done with the base of pastel. And you can always go back in there with pencil for more detail. You see how he's kind of coming to life though?
but it takes just gotta be patient okay so i think i'm at a place where i could almost um where i could almost go spray but remember you, there's no erasing after that you can keep building and adding but you don't after you put a final fixative on is what i use then you're not going to be able to erase so you want to make sure that you don't have any areas where you're going to want to uh, lighter areas you can always get it darker Okay, so I think I'm going to go ahead and step outside and spray. All right, so again, before I do that, I want to make sure that any areas around here. Now, sometimes I'll, and I've shown you this before, sometimes I'll paint the background and it's going to get painted out so I don't care if there's anything in the background. But, you know, you want to make sure if there is anything anywhere that you don't want fixative that you get rid of that with your needed eraser you see there's a little smudge right there or any highlights that you don't want to lose you have any highlights you don't want to lose go in there and pick those highlights i still got some more building up to do but this is like a nice base and uh So, let's make sure I get any place that I want a nice highlight. Maybe one right in there somewhere. All right, so I'm going to step outside, guys. I'll be right back. I'm going to go fixative this. And it just I just got to step outside. It'll just be... BRB. Here, let me put my. And when I come back, before I continue to work on it, we'll do the giveaway of the other. Um, we'll do the giveaway of the other uh, Shannon Green. Uh, it? Yeah, let me get it over here. The Shannon Green's um, Custom Keeper. But I don't want to touch it. Well, no, it's, I put it back in the bag. I was going to say, I don't want to touch it with pan pastel hands. All right, let me go step outside real quick, guys. Let me make sure I take my mat, not the gloss, and uh, give me just a minute. So now I can continue to build up with the pan pastels and or pencils. Take a sip of juice here. Ah. 
<laughs> You're so funny, Janet. <laughs> Whoops, sorry, wait. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so now I think what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and do some pencil because we're not going to have time. But before I do that, let me just kind of slide over the pan pastel stuff. And you will get some uh, pan pastel on here. So if you have a like damp, um, a damp uh, baby wipe, then, you know, just kind of lightly pick it up just like this, just kind of pick it up. And he is sitting on another piece of paper here. So Let's see, and that's just from just using them. Uh, let's see. <laughs> All right. So now let me move some of this stuff out of the way here. I got piles of stuff that I always you have to put all that away after you're done streaming. Okay, so again, let me show you real quick a couple things. This is the book we're working out of. Realistic Portraits, Grayscale, and she did hers. I'm assuming these are all in watercolor. Okay, and uh, I did do a flip through the book. So if you want to see it, um, see it again. Uh, look at the beginning of the stream after the video is fully rendered. And then this is the one we did earlier with Copics. Did this one with Copics and color pencil. And this one is just Copics and really no, no shading done with pencil yet. This is just Copic with a little bit of Posca highlight. But this is what you can do with Copics and pencil. So there's no pencil done on her yet. So you can see how you can get much more depth with color pencil. But I wanted to show you that this, you can get a nice base with a Copic and then at, go in with your color pencil and get all those details. Okay, so let's get some pencils out. Let me move these. And... <clears throat> Let's do our giveaway. Let me get my, let me get random.org again. Hang on. Okay, so I have random.org. There's the last giveaway. 71 is still sitting there. We're going to generate a new number in a minute. All right, so here's how it works. Wait till I type in go. Here's the other set here. So I showed, I, I don't want to take it back out, guys. I showed it earlier. So if you didn't see the custom keeper, Shannon Green's custom keeper, this folds up in half into like a little mini, like TN Travelers, the little port, the um, passport size kind of. But I don't want to touch it because I don't want to get any pan pastel or anything on it. But I'm going to include two of the little um, mini composition books that, that you will use your elastic to put these in the book because this folds over, right? See, there's the the strap and then the other side has the elastics in. I don't want to take it apart, but I want to give do another giveaway. So how it works is wait till I type in go. When I type in go, put in a number and you can be international for this because it's just going to go in an envelope. Put in a number between 1 and 100 when I type in go. One number, yes, it's for international as well, Louise. One number only. The cl person closest without going over. The closest without going over. Okay. There you go. Go. I typed in go. Okay. Wow, bam, there went the numbers. <laughs> so get your numbers in, and then I'll count down. And then when I type in stop, then we'll, you know, everybody can scroll back, but I wait for my mods to tell me. I wait for at least two people, <laughs> two mods to tell me uh, who got it. So we already gave away one of these. And thanks again, Marie, for sending them. Janet's making me give them both away. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah. 
All right, get your numbers in. I'm going to count down between 1 and 100. The first person closest was without going over. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Don't dilly dally. 4, 3, 2, one. Okay, so let's do it. That was the well, the last winner was with with seventy one. Okay, we're gonna generate a new one. That was the last winner. Well, sixty nine won, but yeah. Twenty six. The first person closest to twenty six without going over. Okay, and I'll wait a minute for um, the mods and everybody to see who wins. First one without going over. Yeah, it's the first one. So if, if 10 people put in the same number, it's the first person. The first person. Yeah, without going over. So let me uh, let me wait here. Let me put in a test to make sure my chat's still rolling there. Okay. Oh, wait a second. And then we'll work on our picture. We'll work on our picture with some pencils for a few more minutes. Okay. And Jenning. And Jenning. And Jennings. And Jennings. Okay, here is my email, Ann. Make sure I put it in right. <laughs> email me your address, Ann, and I will send it out to you. I do not share your addresses with anyone, not even the mods. So congratulations, Ann. There you go. So you are going to get the other. If you all want to see it unpackaged, Wait till the video is done. Wait for the video to fully render, which will be about three and a half hours. Wait till it's fully rendered and you can see where I talk about Shannon Green's uh, custom keepers and I tab it out of the package and everything like that. I don't want to do that right now because I don't want to get any pan pastel on it. So, yeah, congratulations, Anne. And uh, enjoy your custom keeper. And, uh, yeah, don't forget, um, will I measure the cover? Well, I think she has it, has it on there. It folds in half. Here's the middle with the strings, and then it has the string that wraps around. So the actual book is going to be this big, right? But the cover itself, if you were just cutting papers for it, let me get my ruler. It is... Eight by five. It's five by eight flat. But remember, it's going to be folded in half. This is the size right there, right? That's what it looks like when it's folded. But flat, the size is five by eight. All right. Let's move that back over there. All right. All right, so let's get back to our guy here. Thanks, everybody, for participating. Thanks for being here. Thanks for all the thumbs up, thumbs down, subby, you know, following. If y'all want notifications of when I stream, because I do do the occasional, I do do the occasional <laughs> impromptu, but I stream every Monday and Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern. I usually come on a little before that to chit chat and say hi and all that but um yeah i stream every monday and wednesday morning and then the occasional um you know impromptu okay oh and i was going to test these paints out maybe we'll do that in a minute oh and i gotta read my thousand and one okay we'll see right, let's maybe do this for about 15 more minutes and then we'll do the paint test of the valspar uh satin paint uh samples you can get these at uh lowe's for like $3.95, I think, for an eight ounce 
jar and the, and there's about I think they have about 12 to 15 colors on display and uh, I just bought two of them uh, and you don't get you can't say oh well can you mix me up a sample of that these are on display and there's their 12 to 15 colors I think something like that you got to take you they don't do this <laughs> it's not custom for you to do this you just take their samples and buy the samples that they have out Okay, so let's just do a little bit of pencil work here. I have some pencils left over from the other one. So the first thing I'm going to do is get in his pupils and his eyes. Let's go ahead and do um, some of the very, and I talked about this earlier. If you have anything that you want that, that you want black, even though the grayscale looks pretty dark and may look black, it's really not black. So anything you want really, really black, you've got to get in there and do it. You're, you got to go in there and add it, okay? Whether it's little hairs, but I won't do that with a pen. The only thing I do with a Sharpie pen, not a Sharpie marker, is um, I just mostly get in the pupils and like a nostril or sometimes just a little bit in the lip. But um, that's what I get in there with the black, Okay. Then with the slate blue, am I close enough? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Maybe I could zoom in one more with a little bit more detail here. Is I shade the white of the eye with a blue slate pencil most of the time. And I like to add a little bit on the top. I don't know why. It's like a reflective light or something. When you put just a little bit of that blue, regardless of the skin tone, that little bit of blue just um, brings it to life, sort of. Uh, I can't explain it anymore. Okay, so just a little bit of that touch of blue. Can y'all see how that blue just made, look at that, see a little bit on the top and then the shadow under the eye and a little bit in the corner. It just makes the eye look rounder, okay? This makes the eyeball look round. Hey, Kenny, good morning. Maya, oh, happy birthday, Maya. I did not see that earlier. Okay, now the other thing that I want to do here is in his uh, shadow is I am going to add even more blue. Blue, if you especially with black hair or uh, sometimes like undertones in the skin color, I love me some blue slate. So I'm going to add some more. <laughs> I could do this with pan pastel too. I could go in there with more pan pastel, but I've already sprayed it and I want to kind of move on move on here so and try to show you as much as i possibly can so i'm going to put like a little bit of tone of blue in his skin here especially in his bearded area janet what are you going to do today on your show so the areas where he has like a five o'clock shadow again i'll show you Where's my Daryl? There's a little bit. I have a little bit of blue. Oops, sorry. I have a little, a little bit of blue under there. But his his face is, is more in light. He has more light to his face than this guy does. So it's got a little bit less uh, blue. Uh, plus, this is kind of a watercolory look that uh, Kristen Karen, uh, Christine, it might be Christine, Christine or, or Kristen has in her watercolor, in her watercolor look. So I'm just kind of going around and adding just a little bit more blue here and there just to give it a little bit more. Oomph, oomph, oomph. Okay, so then I'm going to go in here with uh, some Sienna. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. All right, now I'm going to go in here with some Sienna. <clears throat> And, uh, well, no, you know what? Let me go in here with the dark brown first. And let me get in his eyebrows. I want to get in a little bit more definition in his eyebrows there. I'm not putting individual hairs like in the girl I did. Um, I made little individual hairs. All those little hairs, just drew them in one by one. Okay, so with him, I'm just kind of just getting them a little bushier. 
and just start adding some more shadows. I didn't put any color in his eyes. I think we'll just, maybe we'll just make him have blue eyes. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and give him blue eyes. Why not? So I'm just going to go in there with pencil, the blue eyes, and then I'll go in here with Posca and kind of re go over the little highlights that are already there. And then I might just give him a little extra highlight. Let's give him a little Paul Newman eye. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of white and I can go back over this white as soon as it dries. Whoops, I smeared that. I'll have to go back over that dot, too. Um, so I'm giving them Paul Newman eyes here, blue Paul Newman eyes. So hang on now, touch that pupil, so I'm going to have to fix that. So I'm just kind of tapping in that white. I'm going to go back in and fix that pupil. Okay, so I'm just going to let that sit for just a second, and then I can go over that white. See, it looks real like a white line right there. I'll go over that white with the blue. And you'll see, he's going to have popping poppin blue eyes. That didn't sound right either. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to just add a little bit more shadow back over in this side of the face. A little more shadow in the divot of his lip there. Just give them some more, you know, shading and definition. I, I can do this better with pencil. You know, uh, you can do it with pan pastel, but it's going to take, it would take me longer. I like the pan pastel for the base, for the base of everything. And then go in there for details with a uh, pencil. That's just the way I like it. All right, so now I think that's probably dry by now. So let's just go over that white. And it'll still be bright, but it won't be a line right there. And let's fix this little line. And just a tiny bit of... I'll go back over that with tan color. Just give them a tiny little. Let's go back over that. Just kind of wanted to smooth that out a little. How's that look? Okay, let's see. How's he looking, guys? What happened to Gail? Hmm. Okay. A little bit more. So you can just give them a little bit more ruggedness. A little bit more ruggedness. With more um Starting to look a little, I don't want to get them too, for some reason, if I get too many lines in the forehead, it reminds, it, it, they start looking like Bruce Willis. I don't know why. I don't know why. All right, so I want to do a little bit of blend over here. A little bit of. But now I can start really adding all the details that I want to add with color pencil. But you see how his face is starting to shape? It's starting to shape up. You're starting to shape up, my man. 
a little more blue, I think, on this upper lip. A little more blue on that upper lip. And then, let me get a couple of grays. <laughs> can start getting in here and um, making that five o'clock shadow look. Now don't just, don't go in there and do this. Don't do that. What I'm doing is this. Okay, I'm doing that in there. It's hard to see, but this is how I'm doing it, like that. I'm not going in there and doing this. <laughs> So just FYI, I'm just kind of getting in there and doing a little bit of a scribble, especially right along the edge. If you want just a little extra beardage going on and see, I haven't done any of really of the shade color and uh, stuff in his ear yet. And then under behind the ear here. All right, so and then you can do this too, like I did that, and then just maybe like this, just a little bit like that. <laughs> so you can just kind of get in there and I'll try to post some pictures of this and the other girl that I did with Copics uh, later today. I'll probably work on it after lunch um, at when I when, while I'm at Janet's. I'll work on it. Same thing for in his hair. His hair is kind of like it's kind of I don't say washed out, but you know it's kind of faded out. So there's not going to be a lot of detail in it but maybe just a little bit around the hairline like that, you know. <clears throat> so just a little bit more. I just want like, just that, you know, the idea that there's a little bit of five o'clock shadow in there. No, I don't want it to look like he's got uh, pimples. <laughs> And you gotta be careful. You gotta kind of think about that. You know, do you don't you don't want him to look like he's got you know old uh, scars from acne or something? <laughs> you want it to look, you know. All right, so let's go back in his lip a little. Maybe just a little bit more shadow in the corners. A little bit more blue. So you just keep building up. So I hope this is help was helpful for you guys to um, you know see a little bit more on how to use a grayscale color book. I'm gonna put a little more blue over on this side. And of course you can do more in the shirt or whatever. All right, let's get a little, just a little bit more. And then I'll get a white pencil. Let's get on that.
I'm gonna pick some pick some highlights on his nose. <laughs> uh, and again, I haven't spent much time over here on his ear yet either. But I think y'all got a kind of a good idea of what you can do with pan pastels, pencils, a little bit, um, even some Copics earlier. So let me back out. Okay. And show you we got this one and this one. We have some... Uh, progress on this one just has a little bit of copic and not too much shade nothing really shaded or anything but i just wanted you to see what it started with uh, <laughs> die. uh what it looks like if you just do a, a layer of copic and just a little bit the white lines and the white in the hat is with the posca but there's no pencil shading in this one yet and uh then this one is uh Copic and pencil, and this one is pan pastel and pencil. So, yeah. So, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Let me show you the book again one more time, and then we'll we'll read we'll read out of this real quick. Okay, so it's realistic portraits, grayscale coloring book, Kristen Karen, and all the portraits in here are grayscale. So it's easy to find some shadows to start your pages with, right? Get it on Amazon. Um, yeah, so let me go ahead and, oh, I did want to test these Valspars. All right, let me, let's move this out of the way. I'll take pictures after I'm finished and post them on Instagram and probably Twitter. Okay, so I haven't even opened these yet, so let's go ahead and open them. Look how yummy. So I didn't shake them. I wonder if I should shake them. Probably. Because, you know, this is like, you know, wall paint. <laughs> you really, you need to either stir it or with a stick or something. All right, let me get a, let's get a journal or something just to test it. All right, so let's just do a little scraping with it and see what it looks like. Well, maybe I should try a brush and scraping. Okay, let's do this color here. Okay, so this color is, let's get that excess off there. This color is Valspar Mystic Sea, and it's a satin. Okay, so it's a satin color. So let's just put some down. Isn't that pretty, guys? And then I can take a baby wipe and soften all the edges. And we could put a mermaid right in there. And this is mixed media paper, so it's a little thicker. I didn't gesso, so there's it's soaking right, you know, kind of right into the paper because there's no gesso underneath. So isn't that pretty? It's nice, soft sea foam. It's more like a sea foam than a robin's egg, I'm thinking. Robin's egg has maybe just a little more blue. I could be wrong. But um, I thought that was kind of pretty. Let's go ahead and just put a little bit of gray on it, just because. So I'm just going to just put it, pick up a little bit of gray and just kind of blend it in here. It'll be like a... Uh, stormy sky going on i shouldn't be dipping it in there with i should be taking it off of here yeah, we could do maybe we could do a little let's do a little stormy sky okay so while that is damp i'll take my baby wipe and let's just kind of I really need a little bit more of the blue and a little bit of white. Let's just take it off the lid here. Okay. 
Okay, so now what we'll do. I just like the colors. That's the only reason I bought it. <laughs> just because I like these two colors. All right, now let's take um, some white. I'm looking, 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 looking. Uh oh. All right. This is a new one. I'm going to open it. A little bit of, let's do a little finger blend here or finger clouds. Right. Do this and I'll dry this. And we'll put a little bit of raindrops in there. Okay, I'll let this sit for just a minute. Let that sit while we read our book. Then we'll put some rain in there. All right, let me put this in my water so I don't. Okay. Fresh baby white. I still didn't hear what Janet. Um, can you use pan pastel wet? I don't know. I wouldn't. You can, you can try. I would think it would be kind of blotchy. You won't have the control over it. I think you could probably like scrape some off and add water to it, but I don't know why. I don't know why you'd want to do that. I guess you could. You can probably do anything you want to. I wouldn't do it because I just wouldn't have the control. I wouldn't have the control that I would want. I don't think it's permanent cat colors. I think somebody tried that before, adding water into it, and it's still, it, once it dries, you can still rub it. It doesn't make it permanent. Not pan pastels anyway. It doesn't make it permanent. It might make it less likely, but I don't think it makes it permanent. But y'all y'all test, y'all play. Okay, so A Thousand One Ways to Be Creative, a little book of everyday inspiration, Barbara and Kipfer. I did get this at Tuesday morning. My Tuesday morning, I think if it hasn't closed down by now, it is closing. But I go to uh, the next page we're going to read. Put the bookmark over here. So what does this say? Make time for play. Emulate children's... All right, so these are some prompts and tips to do to, um, to uh, be creative, right? Now let's turn that light back up a little. Um, all right, y'all are talking about, so uh, let me go ahead because I don't have time to, I don't have time to get into the discussion on what Kenny and CL are talking about. All right. Oh, they're trying to, fi uh, how to fix your pan pastels if one's broke. Yeah, I think there's, you can add some, uh, well, all right, y'all look it up. Uh, somebody's putting a link in for you. Make time for play. Emulate children's behaviors that cultivate creativity such as exploration and plain make-believe. Spark your imagination by getting ideas from other places. Follow your passions. Take note of what makes an impact on you. Be willing to experiment. Follow any curiosity you have and be creative in pursuing that curiosity. Add humor and whimsy at times when they are really needed. Pursue activities that spark your imagination. Follow your curiosity. Seek out situations you will make where you will make discoveries, such as traveling to a foreign country or hiking an unfamiliar trail. Find new uses for ordinary things. Make a game out of being someplace you do not want to be. When you are on a crowded airplane, put on your headphones, crank up your favorite music, and pretend you are at a concert. Search online for new bucket idea lists. Look for things that may not have thought you may not have thought of on your own. To make sure you have time to archive, oh, sorry, <laughs> archive is something I would do. Uh, make sure to have time to achieve your goal. Schedule time just for play. And the next week it goes back into the numbered, um, the numbered uh, ideas. So um, yeah, so just a little bit of inspiration 
for um, some prompts. And again, make them your own. If something comes to your mind when I'm reading one or you're reading a prompt and you think of something else to do and think, oh, I should, I would like that prompt if it did X, Y, Z. Well, then write down X, Y, Z. So make it your own. You don't have to follow any of these, you know, to the letter. Uh, let's see, anything else? No, nothing's in caps, so I guess y'all aren't talking to me about anything. I hope y'all enjoyed the show. Don't forget, Janet comes on at, in about an hour, and um, I have no idea what she's going to do, because I did not hear what she said she was going to do, but, um, oh, I was going to do these right. Let me, let me dry this. Let's do this real quick. Real quick. It's kind of, you know, I put it on finger painting, so it's kind of thick. All right, so let's see. Let me turn it sideways because I want my raindrops to be coming. Oopsie, I went through wet paint right there. Okay, a few little sideways rain. Yeah, I can't do it. It's still wet. I'm just picking up wet paint now. But my idea was is to put some rain in there and then go in with just one little, one little smidge of brightness. A little bit of sunshine. A little bit of sunshine in there. There we go. All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So there we go. I hope you all enjoyed today's show. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for stopping in. And um, hope you all got some tips, some techniques, some ideas, some inspiration. And uh, we'll see you over at uh, Other People's Streams, Janet at 1. And then I will be back on Wednesday. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>